question for you. I got a question. The creator put you on the earth. But you have to understand your body's a machine. Mm-hmm. Is it not a machine? Preach. Now, who ever heard of a machine running on, well, junk? You gonna put junk in the machine the creator created? Mm-hmm. Satan wants you to, put to junk take in shitty it. supplements. He wants you to put junk in it, don't he? Our creator wants you to take on it. On it supplements? Why is that? Because the earth grown and the earth comes from the creator? Can I get an amen? Amen! You filthy motherfuckers! I, 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 what? The Lord wants you to take warrior bars. Alpha brain. Uh-huh. Hemp force protein. Yes, he does. Don't you wait. Hey, hey. Don't you wait. Hey, hey. Can I get hey, a hey, hey? And you can get even more than a hey, hey. You can get some hemp force. Active plant-based protein. After all, plants come from our creator. It comes from the earth. The earth? I mean, sure, there are poisonous plants, but there are also plants that are super good for you. And that's what Honor does, sources some of the best plants in the world with the highest fiber content and the highest protein content. Satan doesn't want you to have on it. Satan wants you to eat that shitty supplement. Satan is the anti on it. Can I get on it? On it! Can I get on it? On it! Hallelujah! Hallelujah to on it! Hallelujah! Hallelujah! I'm optimized! I'm optimized! I was down, I was nothing, I was junk, I was crawling mm. in the mud, I mm. was a wretched, blind, mm. small, weak man. Preach, you but old now bitch. I have risen up like a phoenix from the ashes. Thank you, on it. I got optimization. How the optimization. hell? Optimization. How the hell, when you look at those pictures of Jesus, how do you think? His hair got so golden. <laughs> you, you're stepping on some toes here. I'm not going to answer that question. I'm well, no. How do you think his hair got so long and golden? I don't think he was. It's t- krill oil, you nah. stupid fox. Nah, nah, he ain't Can fish. I get on it? Nah, he ain't fish. Satan wants you nah, to he... have broken hair. Nah. He wants you to have dry skin. He wants you to use those filler protein supplements. But then our creator in Austin, Texas came along. Said, not up in here. Not up in here. Not in my house of church. Why don't you just get optimized? On it, church. Do you want strength? Do you want stamina? Oh, I need it. Do you want beauty? Do you want symmetry? Do you want endurance? Well, then, you got to go to honor. It's having supplements. Supplements. It's having supplements. Supplements from our creator. From our creator on it, Texas. Yeah! And I just got to. A page from the big man himself. Go to onit.com slash fighter. 10% off. Can oh, I get a praise oh, on it? Praise on it. Praise on it. 10% off. Praise on it. Go fuck yourself. Hey, 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 hey. Watch your toes. Onit.com slash fighter. 10% oh, off. And there's a, there's a, the angels have spoken to me. They they told me that you and I would be down there March 24th. That's next Thursday, you old fuck. Next Thursday, we're going to be judging and looking and I guess commenting on a BJJ tournament and then doing our own podcast. It's God's work. It's God's work. God's work. I hope John Wolf can work my hips again. John Wolf is Satan. No, he's not. Because he hurt my hips last time. He hurt your hips. I feel like Satan made him do that to us. He make you burn your hips with just a small amount of weight. Aubrey, please have angels lined up when we land in Austin, Texas. Angels lined up. I mean, 3428. Set it up, son. Praise Lord. Hey. Praise Jesus. Hey. Get those angels them perfect asses. Hey, hey. hey. Oh. audit.com. We're back in church. We can't have that Yee-haw. up in here. Satan got hold me for a second. Got hold of you. I'm back, though. Got hey, t- take yourself some on the supplement. Oh, oh. There you go. Swallow them. Leave Swallow you down. devil. Swallow them down. Leave Swallow you down. devil. Swallow them down. Uh, Swallow them down. Big titties. Swallow them down. Hey, man. Hey, no. No. Tits. No. Swallow. Swallow it. Tits. Swallow it. Oh, Damn earth grown uh, nutrients. I feel so much better. Jesus, you were Jesus. Talking about tits and ass and all that stuff. slash fire ten percent off. Jesus, filthy animals. Uh, Man, crazy. I'll tell you what. It's rare you get two, two preachers who yeah. are. Those guys are pretty passionate about. <laughs> those guys yeah, are just they're pretty passionate. Man, about those guys something. are just full of energy. They sure are. And full they of energy. they preach the good word. Yeah. Man, Aubrey really must have. Well, you know affected what affected those guys in a positive way. He's got a direct line to the sacred geometry. He really does. Um, his girl is straight crafted from heaven. Yeah, his girl. Yeah. His girl, girl, God said, you in the front of the line, 
here's an ass for you. Well, I said to Whitney, I said in front of everybody, including Aubrey, I said, Whitney, obviously, <clears throat> NASA designed your ass because that's about as close to a perfect ass as it gets. Yeah, that's not bad. Um, yeah. What can you do? How you doing, buddy? We, uh, <clears throat> let me just paint the picture here. We mm. had a uh, five days of filming. 16-hour days. And we, then we jumped on a red-eye to Jacksonville. Took two planes. To do the Lord's work. Yep, yep. Well, we, we did. We took two planes, and uh, I got – I missed my connection. Thank you, American Airlines. And I had to uh, – at 6 in the morning, I had a five-hour layover in, uh, in Dallas. I hadn't slept. That was fun. And then I landed at 3.30, and I had to be ready by 6 for the red carpet event. And finally, I had to stand up at so, 8. Yeah, so at we the were – Tim Tebow Foundation. Yeah, we were in Jacksonville for the Tim Tebow Controversial charity. weekend for us. <laughs> we'll get into that So we're in Jacksonville for the Tim Tebow charity event <clears throat> Where there's a golf tournament And there's a huge uh, auction Where you know all the money goes to the proceeds of the Tim Tebow charity Which does great things, man It's, great, such, a it's great so charity. fun to be part of great and great It charity. affects a lot of kids Well, at this thing, what they have is You know, there's it's a ton of celebrities there, There's the sponsors there and all the White people And then there's... Uh, some black people. Yeah, there's very few. Athletes. Yes, it's very similar to the Oscars. But then, so what they do is they have, you know, they have a MC, and then they have live music. Uh, the band Perry was there, who's amazing. They were so damn good. Yeah. But and then they have like opening, you know, ceremonies, whatever. And then they have a comedian. And so, you know, Tim being a close friend, I said, dude, no one better than Brian Callen if you want to get this crowd laughing because previous years the the comics have bombed. Mm -hmm. It's a tough room, man. It's you know, it's yeah. it's a tight room. Tight room, it's a ballroom, yeah, Christians. So, Callan gets up there, yeah. and Tim and Robbie go, hey, it's PG-13, right? I went, of course, Callan can do this. Take it away, Brian Callan. Well, no, I, I no, think... But why, why yeah. we, yeah, go ahead, uh, buddy. Well, uh, let me start by saying that as a preface to everything I'm going to say is that I, and I really mean this, I think Tim Tebow is a great guy. I think Tim Tebow the best. is doing for lack of a better word, God's, God's work. work. You know, very few of us are this generous with our time. And <clears throat> this foundation is making a difference. There are kids that are sick, that are dying. And he not only grants them a wish, but he's got hospitals where he creates these rooms called Timmy's, Timmy's Playrooms. Play and then he does, he does a, you know, because these kids with these disabilities, they don't get invited to proms or anything like that. So he goes around, I think, 12 different cities Throwing these kids proms so they yeah. feel like princesses and uh, princes. it's a great it's, it's, he's it's this amazing, guy this yeah. guy this guy Tim is if the world was like Tim Tebow you know we could we could all do better to be a little bit more like Tim yeah he makes sure. uh, and I'll tell you who I like more than Tim is his brother Robbie yeah who I just like because he's just a great dude yeah. and and his sister is a smoke show I told you I had no idea she was that hot yes and his sister is as good looking as they are yes shout out to Katie yeah so the whole Tebow family is doing something right and they're good people so when I when I talk about this this is not uh, it, but be real is, tell but, us but, what but, happened well, well so so. I didn't Tell know. Tell us why Tim I, I, Tebow didn't come on the podcast. Yeah, yeah. Tim didn't do the podcast. I, I didn't know, first of all, that kids were going to be there. And when I got there on the red carpet, I saw exactly two children, uh, both about 11 years old, who were um, clearly going through treatment for some kind of a serious disease. Yeah. <clears throat> and, and then I saw another kid who was probably about uh, 12. And that mm. was all I saw. I only saw three children. Mm. And... Um, but I had a room full of maybe a thousand people. Uh, how many people was it? 700, 500? I don't know how many. Uh, let's call it 500. Maybe Adults more, yeah. and a lot of them famous athletes. And I was called Coach in. Urban Meyer. Urban, Urban Meyer Might was there. Might be your biggest fan now. Who I made keep laugh going. so yes, hard. Keep going. But um, I got up and I was <clears> panicked <throat> when I saw the kids in the room because I realized I had jokes that weren't going to be appropriate for kids. Mm. If I had known kids were going to be in that room, even two, I probably wouldn't have done the charity because I would have told you not to. Do yeah. It. I, I can't do that. I, 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 um, I get very self-conscious and I get embarrassed. This name's Jeff Fox where they're doing redneck jokes. That's I right. don't know if that room's for anybody. Yeah. And so I immediately saw the room and I thought to myself, I've been doing stand up for a long time. I thought this isn't going to go well because I've got to really edit myself here. Uh, I immediately realized that it was going to be a Christian room. It was going to be, and there were some kids there. So, <clears throat> and this is what I'm sorry about. And this is what I was embarrassed about. Um, I'm embarrassed and I'm sorry that I got up and I didn't, I wasn't me. I was trying to edit myself mm -hmm. for the good of um, what, I, what I thought was 
um, appropriate in the room. But what you have to also understand is that when I'm in front of 500 people and you are having me down there on a first class ticket uh, and putting up, me up at a five star resort, I, I have a job to do and that is to make people laugh. And my comedy, I've been making people laugh hard for a long time yes. and I know how to do it. One and I, think, in the world. I yes. think I'm one of the best in the world. Yes. It's the only thing I will admit to <clears throat> about myself. Um, I think I'm really, really good at comedy. Mm -hmm. And sometimes when you have to make adults laugh, you've got to be a little surprising, a little bit shocking, and maybe a little bit, maybe a little dirty. I never used a bad word when I did my set. Not at all. I, I, I never was overtly sexual at all. No. I was, there was some sexual innuendo in my act. I won't apologize for that. Hell no. It, in fact, the parts that were that way, people laughed a lot. But I looked at Tim's face three times in my act, and he had a stone cold stare. <laughs> and I realized very quickly that whatever I was doing was not to his liking. And it got in my head. And I got embarrassed. <clears throat> And I started to edit myself, mm -hmm. and I compromised who I am. Yeah, and, and I'll never do that again. Yeah, that, that, and I think it falls on two people's shoulders. A, mine, because I talked you into coming down there. No, it's okay. And, I, and I've been there five years in a row, right? Tim's a very close friend of mine. Yeah. So A, it's probably my fault. I should have known the situation. But uh, again, Robbie and Tim know Brian Callen. We, Robbie's been to your shows. Yeah. We know what you bring and to Robbie's the table. And Robbie's a fan. All, everyone's a fan. Yeah. Um, and by the way, but, but B, yeah. let me, B, so A, probably me, I should have took some responsibility for it. I thought you did great. And I think everyone in the room did except for a couple tight ass people. Then B, I think it falls on, uh, the guy putting that thing together. Cause, it, and you know, this B anytime we have a live show where it's Brian Callen and Brent Schaub's name on it. I know the ins and outs of what's going on in any show, Irvine yeah. Improv, ask Irvine Improv. Yes. Comedy store, ask Comedy store. Yes. Ask anyone. I'm calling, making sure it's running smoothly. Because guess who it falls on? Brian yeah. and Brendan. Yeah. No matter if it's who else's fault. Yeah. So whoever's running that thing, I'm not going to call them out. And they're good people, they're by great the way. People. And they do a great whoever's job Whoever's running it. that thing yeah. should have a month or two months out called Brian Callen when they knew you were coming and go, hey, man, what's your set? Yeah. Let's just go over some of it. Ah, maybe take this out. This is funny. Is there any way you can talk about this? Because you have tons of Here's material. Here's what they should have That's said. That's what they should yeah. have Here's done. what they should have said. Here's what they should have said. Brian, kids are going to be in the room. If they had told me that, I probably wouldn't have done it. Um, because no one told you anything. No, even I, before we I, got I didn't even there. know when I was going but, on. Yeah, five minutes before, like, oh, you're going at 825. Yeah. I'm like, and, dude, this is ridiculous. And, and that's okay because they had other things and there are bigger things. And, and let me just reiterate. My feelings here don't matter as much nearly because the work that they're doing is incredible. But no, let's, that's all that matters. Let's, that they raise let's, money call, let's call it what it is. There, this is what this is why I'm talking about it. I got up. I did my very best given the circumstances. I did an okay job. Uh, the the highlight was Urban Meyer was howling and then wants me to come talk to his team and was was telling me how much he wants me to come to Columbus. Text me this morning. Yeah. So that's Urban Meyer. That that was an honor to have him laugh. I, a I lot saw, of a lot of people found it funny. Yeah, and I think a lot of people did. I didn't do what I'm capable of because again, I was a bit hamstrung. That's all good. That's, that's not all the, right. That's not. I get you know. That's yeah. You're not going to shine in that. I shouldn't have. I shouldn't have hamstrung myself. And and I have this to say. So Tim apparently, from what I heard from reliable sources, was offended by my set, mm. and and he even kind of embarrassed me. Afterward, because he said, hey, Brian, called no offense. He called yeah. me out. He said, no offense, but a real man isn't somebody who has a lot of uh, social media I think following. He, missed the he misinterpreted thing me because I was saying the exact same thing he was saying. Well, and also when they were announcing what celebrities are there, they mentioned their Twitter followers. Yeah. So, yes. So, so Tim, Tim mis misrepresented me, but Tim was angry at me and I could feel it. And, um, and I think he's wrong. And I was asked to apologize to Tim and I would never That's apologize. Hilarious. I would never apologize That's to Tim hilarious. because I took, I, I lost, I, I, I'll just be quite honest. I lost, I, I gave up probably a job that would have paid me after everything is said and done at least $13,000 for that weekend. Mm -hmm. I had not seen my kid all, kids all week, and I and I took a red eye to go do this for these kids. I was happy to do both. Give up money, no problem. Uh, not see my kids for a weekend to help sick kids, no problem. Take two red eyes uh, where it's a, a terrible flight, no problem. That, that is not and, something I'm going to complain about when you got me. kids who are 11 I, years I old. I agree. No, it's not on you. No, it's not on you. You were trying to do a good job. You said, hey, I'm trying to help kids. I know a really, I happen to be best friends with one of the funniest dudes on the planet and you knew I would do it. Yeah. And so you asked me to do it. <clears throat> and and here's the other thing. What I did, the stand-up I did was not offensive. Well, I thought it was great. The stand-up I did was not 
uh, too much for the kids that were in the room. No. Those kids are fine with seeing sexual innuendo. And if Tim was mad at me for doing that, he should have been mad at the band Perry for gyrating and, and singing about Correct. sex. But apparently he wasn't. So in my opinion, with all due respect, as great a guy as Tim is, he's mistaken in this. And that's all it is. And all of us are mistaken from time to time. Uh, I, I, I probably offended his Christian sensibilities or I offended something. And I'm not sorry about it. I would never apologize no, for I it. No, either. Uh, uh, my heart was in the right place. No, if, it, if anyone's <clears throat> doing an apology, it's you. And I'm mad that I was treated the way I was because I shouldn't have been I, asked I to didn't apologize. Hear, I didn't hear one person thank you. That's the issue I have with it. That's yeah. where I'm embarrassed because I know Tim and Robbie and I know people that work with that foundation. And they're all good people. They're great people. Yeah. And the way they treated you, man, you can't treat my boy Brian like that. It was offensive to me and, and I never stand Brian up Brian said, so the next day there's a golf tournament where it's, you know, celebrities paired up with these people who pay all this money that goes to the charity to play golf. Brian dipped out. Yeah, and I dipped out. They go, where's Brian? I went, you serious? Yeah. We guys treat him. He left. Yeah. And I would have done the exact same thing. Because I didn't want to make a fuss. Because and the, the other thing is, that the reason I didn't play golf also, also is I didn't want to create any issue for Tim where he was going to have to talk to me or confront me because it wasn't about me. That weekend is about kids and about something much bigger than my feelings. Yeah, and they raised a bunch of money, so yeah. the job got done, but yeah. they're and wrong so, in this. So point. that's why, and I even explained that to his uh, one of his assistants. I said, I don't want to make a fuss. You know, just get me an earlier flight and we'll see what happens. And, and Tim, but listen, Tim, and, Tim and knows, and you know, it. I mean, Tim knows he can count on me for anything. And, um, yeah. well, I know, even I, said I to Robbie, I even said to Robbie T, but I go, dude, uh, you know, I don't matter in this. I don't care. I'll get over the fact that Tim was offended Trick and didn't like what kid. I did. I, I'm not a baby about this. I, th th I care about the kids. So if I can recommend a comic, I'll try to find a comic who would be great for Is this. Is Jeff Foxworthy? I, I don't know who's good for that there are job. Some, yeah, I don't know. Is everyone, the, I'm, and this is, I've been five years ago. It's not going to be as funny. Get rid of a comic. Don't have a comic. Yeah, don't have That's, a comic. You're killing yourself. Yeah, I would Just never have do Just have Ben Perry play earlier. Yeah. Have him play twice. There yeah, have there. music, don't not have comedy. Don't have a comic. Yeah. If you do, bring on fucking, I don't know, Wayne Brady with yeah. hand puppets. Yeah, you're right. Other than that, yeah. I don't know what to tell you, man. Yeah. I agree. And there are comics that can do a great job doing that. I'm not the guy. And, I, and I, I'm sorry I compromised myself. I'm sorry I edited Ugh, myself. I felt like shit, I'm man. Sorry That's that usually I one of my favorite weekends. And yeah. I'm glad it went well with the kids, but ugh, even Jay Schaub was down. Yeah, man. Uh, Jay Schaub had my back, and you had my back. The, my two, my two <laughs> junkyard dogs. What you think going to happen? My, my wife goes, uh, was Brennan, uh, did Brennan look out for you? I go, did Brennan look out for me? That's my junkyard dog. That's when you know you got a friend when Brendan Schaub steps up and is basically, basically, I, I've never seen you if like they that. Weren't, if they weren't better friends, there would have been. Yeah, your Aurora chin Schaub went down. Your chin, yeah. well, your chin went yeah. down and you were came out of retirement. War. And I really appreciate if they, if that. It were, if this was just a random charity event, someone would have got slapped. I like, having the, talking to Brian like, I like having the Shaw brothers on my side because you guys were Jay's right the there. secret killer. Yeah. Dude, Jay Shaw. Well, yeah, Jay is ties on. Loosen. I'm like, what's he doing? Uh, hey, man. Shark eyes. Shark eyes. Can't kill these guys. Shark eyes. Doll smile. Dude, Jay told me that he's been getting a lot of dolphin smile. People think it's dolphin Dude, smile. Me and Jay it's doll smile. D-O-L-L, -L, you fuck. Posted a, me and Jay posted a picture on the red carpet with you. And, someone go, and Jay posted it on Instagram. Someone goes, looking good, shark eyes, dolphin smile. <laughs> When you think about it, it's though, dolphin. it is kind of dolphin smile. Nah. Dolphins all. Yeah, maybe it is a dolphin smile. So, buddy, I'll tell you what, that was a long day. Then I played golf, right? Great time. Out in the sun, drinking all day. Got my buzz on a little bit. Yep. So did Jay Schaub. But I haven't got any. I'm, I was going off maybe four hours of sleep in four days with all the shit Dude, we're I doing. I slept hard. Yeah, you were good for you. So then we're drinking, right? Playing golf. I'm out in the sun, sunburnt, playing with the kids. Love the kids. Dude, I get home and I crash for hard for three hours. I wake up to old shark eyes, dolphin smile going, hey, wh what do you want to do tonight? What? What do you want to do tonight? I'm like, uh, how about nothing? Because we've been so busy. Nothing. He goes, I want to go to dinner, man. Hey, bro, there's sort of room service. But don't you usually get invited to Tim Tebow's dinner that night uh, at his house? You ruined that for me, Brian. Did he not invite I, I you? I think I'm on the dark list. Did you get Did you get blacklisted from Tim Tebow's uh, I don't know man. after golf party at I his house? Yeah, I've been every year except for this one, so we'll figure That's it out. Interesting. <laughs> so you basically got blackballed from. So I got you blackballed from the dinner. Hey, uh, Amen. Because of my because of my my well, risk. You, you know, if you're a comic and you offended Tim Tebow with your comedy, you're probably doing your job. That's a good By the point. way, you know who loves my comedy? His brother Robbie loves it. But they, everyone loves it, yeah. but that room, you know, that's just. 
It's tough, man. It's a look. I, it's, it, you know, it's my fault for bringing you there. It really is. Nah, I've been there five years. Tim's one of my best friends. I tried mixing you guys together. Yeah, what can you do? Yeah, you know. Again, Tim Tebow's a great guy. Oh, Again, I love Tim. that he knows room, he that room is great. Again, that charity is awesome, and all of that is way bigger than what I'm talking about. But um, I just thought it was funny. I, I just wanted to kind of bring it out because well, you know what? You know what? My feelings got. My, my, I'll admit it, and Your I'm hard. Got hurt. My feelings got hurt. My feelings got hurt. I couldn't sleep all I know. night. Hey, which is I've weird. I've never seen your feelings. That's why it affected me so much. Yeah. Ask Jay. It's I hard go, to hurt go, my feelings. I've never seen Brian Callen ever affected by anything. Yeah. Ever. I've seen people shit on you. When I was asked, when I was asked to apologize, I felt like crying, so I had to walk away. And I've, ne- I haven't had that feeling in forever. I'm a grown man, and I was so. Uh, I was actually so, I was like, I was like, what's going on with me? I go, oh, my feelings are really hurt, hurt and I'm embarrassed. It hurt my feelings. Yeah, it was very embarrassing, and it was very hurtful. Um, hey, uh, you're looking forward to 2017, Tim Tebow and Yeah, 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 yeah. So, you know, so listen, man, I, 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 but you got to stick up for yourself. There's, there's, a, there's a time to be modest, and then there's a time to stick up for yourself and never uh, apologize I, for who you are. Listen, I never you know me, sorry. man. If, if you'd have done something too much, I would have been like, B, what, I did what nothing the fuck wrong. are you doing? I nothing. didn't do anything wrong. Nothing. The only thing I did wrong in fact, it's showing up. Was no the thing I did it's wrong is I, I didn't do my stand up. I didn't do my set. I didn't commit to what I was. It'd been funny do. if you just crushed that and room with your original stand up yes. for for half. An that would have been sick. Ge-deuce, ge-deuce, yeah. ge-deuce. I'm Brian Callen. I'm out. That's what I should have done, and that would have been appropriate. Go fuck yourself. That would have been appropriate for me to get up and do a half hour of killer material. And be dirty and be crazy, and and Tim would That's be the only fault. guy not laughing, and everybody else would have been I dying. Agree 100%. And in that case, Tim is wrong, and and Tim Tebow is allowed to be wrong, and he's a great person for the most part. He's right. In this case, he was wrong. He will always be wrong about that, and that's okay. That's fine. That's how I feel. Can't be right all the time. Mm-hmm. Everyone sins. Mm-mm. Remember, kids. Everybody sins. Everybody's a and sinner. And so bad when it's cloaked in comedy. Come on, mm-hmm. motherfuckers. Or first thing I said, piece. the first joke I came out with is I, I went, uh, well, uh, they asked me to do this charity, and uh, I said I would, I'd be happy to do it um, as long as you fly me first class and put me up in a five-star resort and I get to play golf with celebrities. I'll do anything for the kids except for fly coach. Some people Cause, laughed. Because, I mean, yeah, I go, I go, I go, I'll help the boy. I just won't sit with him because that's gross. <laughs> Some people laugh. <laughs> Most did. Most did. I, as soon as you went there, I checked, I looked at you and went, oh, fuck. I man. thought that was a good joke. No, I, I thought it was hysterical. But they all were like. Urban Meyer howling. Howling. Laughing. Urban Meyer, the best guy of all. Uh, howling? Because I, howling, I, I said to Urban Meyer, I said to the guy, I go, you ever been horny and worried at the same time? Like you get worried in the middle of being, having sex and you're like having sex and you're like, oh, what are we going to do about the whales? He mm. fell out. Everybody you thought else. it was funny. Yeah. I mean, it was a fun weekend. It was just yeah. that combined with shooting all week, red eye to there, them wanting to lynch you. That was just, it was yeah. just a lot. Man. Hey, listen, man, the weekend sucked. Okay, let's call it what it is. For me, it sucked an ass. I've it never seen you hurt like that, and that fucking broke my heart. Mm. Broke we're my all good, heart. Bro. We're all good now. We're all good. Hey, life yeah, we're is, great, uh, man. Life is that way. Hey, back on the road for Brian Callen, Brendan Schaub. Wednesday, Irvine Improv. <laughs> Finally, kid coming at you Denver. live. Mile high. Mile high city. We're coming, you silly fox. <laughs> Sometimes your, I just like to cuss, man. It's your birthday. I hate it. It is my birthday. Yeah, I, I forget you a about it. No, you don't. I like Rolex as presidential. But the thing uh, is, uh, Rolex Kermit or Hulk. What do I get you? Uh, Rolex, Shit. please. Uh, the thing is. How about a nothing? How about I get you how a, about a nothing? You don't have to give me anything because then I have to get you something. I, you did get me something for my birthday. That's I why did. I'm, that's right. That's I, I got you a nice. You, you got nice. me something awesome on sale. Now it was three hundred dollars. No, it was on sale. But uh, here's the but thing. But still, a three hundred on sale from Vince off Abbott Kenny. No, dude, you spent a hundred and twenty-six dollars, and that's a lot. Not. And that's a lot. Absolutely not, <laughs> yeah, dude. This is listen. I'm, I, I really appreciate. I'm the looking gift. forward to the shows, though. Birthday, I don't. I, I'm. I, you know what? You, I want for my birthday a sold-out show on the 18th. 30, 33 years old. Thirty-three years old. Thirty-three. Christ's age. What? Alexander the Great's age when he conquered the world and Jesus Christ's age when he died. He died at 33? Yeah. How does that make you feel? How about, well, the, how about a guy? Year. How about, a, how about a, a rabbi at 33 years old? He, and, and basically, we don't have any record of his life from the age of 12 to 30. And then for three years, he basically revolutionizes That's the way crazy. people <coughs> think. No, it's so crazy. It's <laughs> like... No, but you got to give it up for the for the philosophy. You do, man. It's for the insane. radical philosophy okay. and, and its effect after twenty two thousand. years. How about years? the dragons on Game of Thrones? <laughs> Brendan, what? Wait, what were we talking about? Brendan, 
What are you trying can to I say? I just offend some people. Um, yeah, I'm not yeah, a, I'm what not can you do, man? What else is up, buddy? Uh, what else is up, man? I am. Um, I'm trying to think. I. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you uh, what's I'm up. I'll, can I tell you what's up? Yeah. I talked to the guys at Five Four. You did. I did. I talked to the guys at Five Four. I said, "Listen, man, this Robert Geller collection is sick." Well, you know what I wore the whole time I was down. Robert there. Geller. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I wore. Especially you saw my the, shirt. Especially on the glasses. I love and that so, shirt. I was telling him, like, man, we need to figure out a way where more people can get it going. You know what I'm saying? You mean you want people to be more part of the 54club.com? I do. Well, especially for the month of March, because it's Robert Geller. I'm telling you, this designer is a beast. And yeah. anything outside of 54, it's hundreds and hundreds of dollars. Well, here's the so thing. So I told 54, I'm like, listen, we're doing great. Yeah. Our fans are loving it. But what can we do to sweeten up the deal? And they said, oh, well, what do you think? We're going to give you free range to come up with a plan. I said, Okay, how about 30% off plus the Robert Geller sunglasses? Mm. So it's basically, you know, just the sunglasses alone would be $220. But for $42 this month, you get the 5-4 Robert Geller package. You get for 42, 42 bucks. So so listen, guys, all, all I don't know how they make money on that. That, well, the they quality. might hate me. They said, come up with your own. I said, what's the best thing but for dude, my the fans? the quality is so good. $42 if, for Robert if Geller. I'm, if I'm wearing it and you wear it, I, like, I wear it. I wear that Non-stop. stuff because it looks good. And, and and it's good quality for forty two bucks. How are they making money? <laughs> I have no idea. Not my problem. Five four knows. Did you I come love up them. with that? Yeah, I did. That's so nonsense. you get the Robert Geller sunglasses, dude. Thirty percent off, which comes out to forty two dollars oh for the month of March. God. For Robert Geller, for the, one of the best the, designers. The Robert, Robert Geller. Package? And remember, Robert Geller worked with Yeezy season one. He's worked with Common Project. Hey, if you don't he like it, line. I'll give you your money back. For real. Jesus. How good is that? So go to five four club. Spell out five four club dot com. God. Promo code FIGHTER for the 30% off plus the sunglasses, Robert Geller collection. You're welcome. You know, it's all true to size, too. So if you're a real medium, it's a medium. If you're a large, it's a mm-hmm. large. But the clothing is <laughs> crazy. Huh? Well, you saw that I wore the Robert Geller, that, that, the T-shirt that goes down yeah. to the elbow. I wore that like two days in a row. <laughs> Dude, my brother never asked me for anything. And he goes, hey, man, the Robert Geller collection. Can you have him send me a package? Yeah. So I hit up a new. Well, when we, did the, uh, when we did the photo shoot, the Robert Geller photo shoot, I was like. That was fun. I was wearing stuff. I was like, I wouldn't wear this. I'm too old for this. And then I looked at the um, pictures. I was like, I'll be wearing that stuff. Oh, yeah. Hey, let me get those jeans back. You know, we get the, uh, yeah, 54 club.com promo code fighter. Spell out 54 club.com promo code fighter. Robert Geller. You're welcome. Yeah. Um, you know, we have the entire Staff from Fire and Kid 3D coming to our Irvine show. Seriously? Yeah. It's That's be exciting. Fun. I know. What are we going to do at the uh, Irvine? We haven't even thought about what we're going to talk about. Yes, I have. Oh, you have? I was on a plane for six hours, wrote it all out. Good man. It should be good. Good man. Yeah. Well, I slept and I watched Creed. Dude, I had this. Oh, you know what? I watched a documentary on Ronaldo. Oh, he's such a beast. Dude. Ronaldo, the best in the world. You know what? It, when you look at it, like his he his need to be the best in the world. Like I don't have that in me. Why don't I have that in me? Like his need to be number one. He's obsessed. But he's also with a great guy. Like he he's also it. his family and his friends, and you can they see talk about his he's son. Got, yeah, he's stud. so good with his son. Yeah, I know. He's but like a super dad. He's they a dress super dad. The same. Yeah, yeah, it's incredible. Beast. It's actually you know, made they, me they think don't know about who the mom my is. son. They don't know who the mom is. You, you won't release who the mom is. Oh, so he's not married. He's wow. brilliant, beating the game, Dude, beating the game. Dude, I wonder if he gets laid. Um, I don't know. So he won't release who the mother is. No, no, so he's no not, one knows who the mom is. he's not married. No, but he wanted a child. No one knows who the mom is. Wow. How interesting is that? Is there any chance that he is pitching for the other team? What, what, do, you mean, what do you mean? Like playing for Real Madrid? or? I'm glad you asked. Well, no, what I mean, is there any chance that uh, he's, uh, you know, uh, like wearing... He, wearing, wearing uh, sandy colored loafers. Oh wait, so like he plays for the Yankees, but wants to play for the Red Sox? No, 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 no. okay, here. no. Is there, is there any chance that he is, um, uh, like you know, dipping his his toes into um, into the other side's waters? I you're gonna have to be more clear. You mean like he's okay, Peyton Manning I mean. and he wants to play for the Raiders? No, no, okay. I'm so here, confused. Here's what, I, here's what I mean. Is there any you need shot? To break down is there more. any shot that he's like more clear? Cockfiend. And he's just going on and down. I again, I can't really make that out. That okay. he's a is he is he that he's a is he is cock, he, like, is he, he has a pet cocker spaniel. Is he, is he banging guys? Is he 
Bangs. That's Did you say like, Bangy Guys? Yeah, I said that out loud. Oh! But it was code for Bangy Guys. Don't be so obvious. I said, is there any chance that he's... Oh, because when you go... Yeah, that's that, what I mean. Because it's very clear when you do that. Is there any way so that you're, he's... You're there, saying, do you think he's... Kurt and Bang? <laughs> what do you think? So is he putting his dick in their assholes? Hey, 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 hey. I just made out something really gross. No, what? I'm asking. Well, I just did is, he, did. is he is he is he shoving his mm, in there? Mm. Is he peeling their is he peeling their peach and and breaking their snow? Thing? Oh, is he? Oh, is he? Fuck, starting their mouths with his dick, dude. I understand what you're saying. So you, no, I'm doing it like you. The bottom line is: is he? Is he? Is is is? I he, don't think so. Is he? Is he or is he not a stranger to God? <laughs> I don't think so, man. I, I know he flew. And I don't care. I, I know Kim Kardashian was a booty call for him. He literally flew her in. Was like, really? See ya. The next uh, flight, private flight out the next day. I, I just love. He's him. just killing the game. I love he might him. be playing for both teams. Why not? When you're that beautiful, why wouldn't you have sex with both men and women? I've heard of a why, guy. Why? Why? Why rob well, men of uh, like? I can just see I, gay men and women. And straight men like me, for that matter, are very attractive. I've, to I've heard also. of a, and I won't mention his name, but I've heard of a very famous guy who gets tons of chicks. Was just so fed up with ch- just getting so many chicks. He's like, I, I got to figure something else out. Start banging guys on the side. Yeah. I call that gay. But uh, uh, I've just never had that, you know. I, I, you, maybe he just gets so many chicks. He was like, I, mean, I don't know what it is. I'm just, I'm bored. Yeah. You know what? Bring Gary over here. Yeah. Well, for what? I'm going to put this in his dick. Yeah. I'm going to put this in his dick. What, my index finger? <laughs> you meant his ass. Yes. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. And it doesn't matter. And it's a stupid thing to bring up. But um, at it the end of the day. No, he, but you're not the first one to bring it up. He is walking excellence. He is excellence. Oh, from the he, way he, he could looks, be the greatest athlete on, from the, way on the he, planet. Yeah, from the way he looks, the way he plays. Yeah, like, like LeBron detail. James is an amazing athlete, but he's not very good looking. Ronaldo. Yeah, Ronaldo. He looks like... He looks like Morgan Freeman did a shitload of steroids, lost his hair, and well, then he just, just sat a, in the sun for he, he, ever. Uh, well, the fun th- thing about King James is he looks as old as I am, which is I which know is it's crazy. crazy, right? But Ronaldo is just this. He's such a charitable guy too. Like he, this girl was crying and she stormed the state the the field, and he goes, "Bring her over," and he hugged her, and she was crying. He goes, he's "Calm down, best, relax." Man. Yeah, like, he's just aware of how great he is. It's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, and every detail. Every detail, you can see even the way, like I was watching little things about the way he stirs his, like his shake, like he puts something in his shake, mm-hmm. and the way he does it with the spoon, puts it down, the way he drinks it, there's there's a precision to every movement, like he's hyper-disciplined. Did you see uh, on his way, uh, he, cr- he bought a new Ferrari and he was driving to work to practice, and he crashed his Ferrari spinning, like, what? yeah, it was raining and it spun out of control, like flipped over. Oh my God. He didn't get a scratch on him. The fry was totaled. Thank God. He hopped in a cab and still made to practice on time. What and literally was not affected. It was just like, oh, fuck, what can you do? Of course. It's a Ferrari. I figure it out. How crazy is that? Hey, pick up that red piece of trash. Hey, Uber, let's go. Yeah. I'll figure out another one. Amazing. Ronaldo. God said, no, 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 no. Not today. Not, not today. today, man. No, no, no. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hey, man. Isn't it funny how when you see something that perfect, like a, like a human being who's at working at that level of excellence, you, you, I don't even watch soccer, but I want to protect him. Oh, I'll watch him. Have oh, you seen him? What? I only watch him. You got to see this documentary. It's, it's I like, mean, if he called me for a booty call, I'm not, I, it'd be tough to say no. I, hey, I'll make, if I'll, he's slid hey, in my DMs right now, I'm like, God. Fuck, I, 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 I swear to God, as a straight man, if I was a little drunk and I'm and I'm being I'm saying this and I'm not, I'm not being funny. I'm not gonna go Oscar Dela. I Loya. would make out with him. <laughs> I can't believe I just said it. He's the only man on the planet that I promise you I would make out with. Might be the only guy. Like, on you the would catch me bub slapping with him, and I'd be like, I was drunk, I was drunk, and then you'd bub be like, slapping? drunk, move out of the way. I'm sober. No, uh, just, yeah, maybe I'd give him a handy. You, uh, you'd kiss. You would kiss Ronaldo. Kissing to me is more intimate than a hand job. Hey, hey, bitch. Just look at me. Do I, how am I a touching, bitch? I said I I don't want to touch job. his dick, but I, I, I but you would see, make I, out. See, with I think him. he has no beard. More, I think kissing is more intimate than hand job. Hey, am I way off? I don't this give a shit. Obviously, if you hand job him, you're into dick. I'm talking about his face. You <laughs> fucking. I'm talking about he looks somewhat feminine. He's such a beautiful <laughs> man, dick. and he's such a perfect human being that I might, I might put my straightness on on the side just to make out with him because. Out of respect, like if he said to me, "I want to kiss, I want to kiss you." You don't I, want to disrespect. I, I want them. to kiss you. You kiss me, you know. I would go, "Ah, oh, fuck, man." Okay, but no, nothing. I can't do the other stuff. Uh, and he go, "No, no, it's no problem for me. You it's know, no just, problem." Just I put on the Rihanna, you know. I want you to stay. And I'd be like, I, 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 I've never done it. Oh, 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 it makes me feel. Sick. Man, you smell like 
You smell good. What is that? It's a, no, it's a cologne. You know that they make for me. It's a Ronaldo. It's called Made a, out of my tears. Oh, of course, it's called Ronaldo. I oh, I'm married to a woman. Oh, oh, oh. oh so you're full blown French kissing. Oh yeah. I mean, yeah. You got it. You got it. Oh. Hey, speaking wait, of. Stuck his tongue in there. I go. Oh. 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 oh, oh. Hey, speaking of. Uh, I want you to stay. Well, why, I mean, why, why, fantasy, why would it be more upbeat, Rihanna? La 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 la. You know our new song? Have yeah, you but that I just one? feel like that this song make be... you dance, shake your tail feather. Yeah, but uh, I just feel this would be speaking more. Speaking of uh, on this subject, Viceland has their own channel now, and they have a uh, show called Gaycation. Have you guys seen it? It's the girl from uh, Juno. You mm -hmm. know what I'm talking about? Yeah. So she's a lesbian, right? She, she just is? came out recently. They're like maybe a what year. What happened ago. to her career? She was so good. Yeah, she came out. And then they're like, you know what? We're good. Yeah. Uh, so you're gay. We can't I have know, you sucks, uh, playing man. Audrey. But uh, so she, her, and her best friend, who's also gay, man, they go all over the world, like basically investigating the gay um, culture. Mm -hmm. They went to Japan, which was insane. So in Japan, it's so taboo frowned upon yeah, to taboo. be gay especially yeah. if you're a male mm -hmm. that one of the biggest businesses there is this company that hires uh women or guys so you can fit in so they so they, you, they, they hire you a wife they hire you a husband so, so you, you look like you're role. married and, and you live together you live but you're just roommates yes so they had a gay guy in there he goes yeah with with my uh, mom she thinks i'm married for the past three years but we're basically roommates we barely say hi to each other she lives on this side i live on this side but because you don't want to disrespect her family yeah so then they bring in the mom for the guy to come out to her does not go well no does not go well no oh why because you have cameras everywhere and the host from the show sitting there oh, mom's like oh shit got up and left came back though and she was all good however on the latest one they go to brazil and you know in Brazil is the number one place for uh, murder for LGBT people. Yeah, if you're gay, or you're you're. So there's that, that's the thing that there's people literally don't people realize. there that yeah. hunt gays and slaughter. Yeah, they it's they don't murder. Them. They don't murder. Them. They mutilate them and then murder. Them. They they do some horrible stuff. Fuck. So on this gaycation, they interview this guy who's one of those guys who search for gays and kills them. Jesus. It was horrible, man. And guess why he's at? They asked him. He's probably gay. No, they asked him. He caught his son. Fucking another dude, and that's how he found his son was gay. His son disappeared because his dad was gonna kill him. Son disappears, so then his way of revenge is killing these gays. Yeah, uh, uh, ignorance is alive and well in 2016. Dude, it's crazy. So that little girl from Juno, I keep forgetting her name. You can, you, can you guys look at her name? Uh, the little girl from Juno and her best friend go. Well, if there weren't soldiers here protecting us and these people, what would happen? He goes, cross my path, I'd kill you. Look, man, it I, was so I remember intense, when I was in the college, guys Ellen were Page. killing. Ellen Page. Ellen Page. The, the show's brilliant, yeah. man. The when show I, when I was in college in Washington, D.C., I knew, I remember gay men were being not only beaten up, but killed. They they were being lured in the park by dudes, and they would just, they would they would kill them. What the fuck is wrong and, with and, people, and man? Because, because that's... That's how it is in Russia. That's how it is in a lot of countries. Yeah, but not here. Still, yes, but in there, still, still places here. It's so yeah, where I it's know. It's dangerous so ridiculous. to be different. Well, even Kristen Beck said she's walking down the street and got sucker punched. Yeah. Well, they they showed this one. Uh, he's a, a transgender, and uh, he was like, you know, they have the carnival and there's a big gay pride thing there, and they dress up as women, blah blah blah. Yeah. And he's one of the like focal points of this show every year. Yeah. He was. He was kidnapped and murdered God and not only was damn. murdered but they stab out their eyes they cut off their genitals Jesus Christ. They, they, they like mutilate them they torture them and then Jesus kill them Christ. it's you watch this you're like fuck man what is wrong with the world that's that's it's what's heartbreaking wrong. that's man. not look in in uh, isis throws gay people off of roofs it, it, it's it's um if you ever wonder why a lot of gay people are um angry or they they have a, you have a group of people who happen to be uh very active uh, socially or maybe you know, there's a saying in Hollywood: it's the gay mafia. If you cross them, you'll get you'll get fucked over. Yeah. Well, th 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 yeah, no I don't know about it's that. So but, but if you were, if you lived, if you grew up where being gay was actually physically dangerous, you might be a little bit radicalized yourself. Dude, they're talking just about just to stay fucking I agree. healthy. They're you know? talking about in Brazil where these two ladies were holding hands during dinner and they kicked them out of the restaurant. Yeah. Like you can't do anything, yeah. man. Yeah. And Brazil's you know full of fun and everything else, but as long as you not when comes down uh, to it's that it's a very catholic country my friend it's very yes very catholic very and it's catholic getting more christian and catholic yeah. and then also um it, it was just insane man it was insane like they they interviewed reg, not i don't say regular but that's terrible they interviewed heterosexual people on the beach 
Mm. And they had guys on there. It's crazy how uneducated they are. They go, oh, obviously being gay is a choice. Like they choose to do that because, uh, and they have a, the, a guy running, running for office there. And he goes, well, you just got to beat the gay out of your kids. If your kid's showing that way, you just beat them and they'll yeah. the change the path. Yeah. So, was always the so case. this page lady sits down with this politician who's, uh, he's, he's, uh, he's, uh, he's homophobic. She sits down with them and she goes, so you're telling me if my parents would have hit me, I wouldn't be gay. And he's like, yeah, I don't want to get in this with you, but basically, yes. Like your parents didn't do a good job. That's why you're gay. Mm. She's like, this is first ridiculous. of all, flies in the face of science. They're, they're also ignorant. It, it shows how the, the stupid science, they are. The science would suggest that you are born some, there is a subset of the population that is born essentially gay. Who, who would choose that? Who go, oh my God. Yeah, I want to be a pariah. I, wa I, I want to be a guy who gets yeah. picked on, yeah. who's constantly bullied, who can't live his life, yeah. has to hide. Who would choose that? Right. You ignorant fucks. Yeah. That's the only time, if I ever saw it, it's the only time Aurora Big Brown would come out. You'd beat the fuck out of somebody. 100%. Yeah. That'd be yeah. the only time. I'd love to see you do it. Yeah, me too. Yeah, and, and uh, it's terrifying. It's got to be I felt bad for terrifying, him, Terrifying, you know? But that uh, um, that Viceland show is killing it. So they have that. It's my favorite channel. I'm all about it. So they have Gaycation, and then they have uh, Fuck This Is Delicious with Action Brunson, mm -hmm. who's a rapper who's on Rogan's podcast, who got Rogan so high Rogan's never been that high he just smokes nonstop. Oh, so fuck that's delicious he's a big fat guy from uh, New York right f uh, f he's getting more famous rapper Action Brunson and he flies in all these cities and goes to their top uh, restaurants and it's him and his boys who are on tour you would like it mm -hmm. it's fun man they go to all these different uh, creative restaurants and they sample the food it's pretty cool it's cool yeah I love eating me too, man. I love that's like, like like my life could be a restaurant critic and I travel. Agree. God damn it! I feel like we could get our own cooking and, show and be like also like then these girls. Let's see if these girls are more slutty than the girls over here. Let's oh let's try out the girls in like, Tampa. This is great food, but let's see if the girls in Tampa are willing to go hang out with a hey ladies. I'm 49 and married with two kids. You guys want to get some of this? I'm 33 with baby. It's, we'll figure it out. The try TV. these chicken it's, wings but out. But it's for the TV show, so I can't enjoy it when we do it. It's just it's purely. It's for purely entertainment. Yeah, and purely, you know, for data collecting. That makes oh, sense. Those are your days. Oh, oops. Well, it's Sorry. intense, man. What? I just said those are your You'd days. love this channel, though, Viceland. They're doing another one on uh, marijuana. This guy's opened up marijuana. How marijuana is affecting people, like th how it helps. Like It shows little girls, these cancer patients, which is the only thing that helps them. Mm. They got some cool God stuff, damn. man. It just got launched, too. Literally, I, I don't miss it. I, I don't know why, but as you're talking, I had this, uh, this memory of being on a cruise when I was young and this woman who was, uh, she was not attractive at all and she was our waitress and she was from Bulgaria and she had a really nice body <clears throat> but her face could stop a clock. <laughs> and uh, we were out drinking and I ended up. How old are you first of all? I was probably in my 20s and we ended up. Oh, you're good. Um, yeah, and we ended up, of course when you're in your 20s, at least if you're me, you'll have sex with pretty much any girl yeah and whatever you goes. know you're an animal you're yeah it's case. whatever nice it's, it's a good experience ah, you know your face whatever yeah and uh there's always something beautiful to look at look at her hair yeah you we'll know? figure it out and um i don't know why i remember this but uh i was i was uh pleasuring her with my we were in a doorway wait were you <sighs> we were on the street i don't know how you get on we're this. on the street what? in a doorway on a but hold on, hold on. there's yeah. no you're on a cruise ship there's no street this you're, is, you say you're in between where the... Yep, yep. And this was in, I believe it was Bermuda. Uh, Hashtag I'm gonna rich say, white I'm going to say Bermuda. Mm -hmm. And I pushed her into a doorway at night after we were drinking. We were making out. And she was grabbing at my club. Uh, <laughs> and I I can't believe... Why am grabbing I doing at this? that swordfish? Why am I doing this? Yeah. And then I I fell to my knees and I, I, I began to pleasure her. Okay. Yeah. And then what? Uh, well, she pleasured me first, and then I, I, I didn't. I, I fell to my knees. You I said, "Let me, douche. let me get." No, I didn't get douche. I didn't get douche. Okay. Get douche. okay. I said, "Let me, let me work you a little bit." For, you're great. Yeah, and you're a great. She, I time. guess, I guess, climax. If you believe that kind of thing, and she, and she went, she went, ah, and, it, and it sounded like this. And I'm not kidding. She went, Like a that's winding, that, that's that Bulgarian. like a plane that's going down. Yeah. And then she went, and then she fell. She kind of went down and fell and hit her head <laughs> against the fucking marble. 
the marble column like at the door. She went gay like that. She went oh. So she went ah. She went ah. 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 And I was like, are you okay? She goes, I don't think so. I'm not good. I went, she left. Oh, I was like, oh man, here, maybe this will help put this in your mouth. She goes, no, no. I still had it. I was like, hey, what about the kid? Hey, man. What about the kid? She's like, oh, no. What about this I, fucking I don't, Bermuda I don't feel, swordfish I, I dick over there? I feel so good. I feel sick. I was like, oh, shit. Oh, she honey dicked you. So I had my. She wanted to get out of there for you. Probably wanted you to get re- out there. Release before, those scallops in her mouth. Before I gadooshed. I, I, I just sick. got sick that you said I, scallops. <laughs> I got sick. I feel sick. Don't myself. ever say released. Don't ever say released those scallops in her mouth. There I is feel nothing sick. worse. I have well, never. You're on a cruise. You changed Wait, everything. I, re- I referred to your dick as a swordfish. Oh my and then you God. released the scallops in her mouth. I want to die right uh, now. I feel sick. I want to die. I think it was like. Well, All right, man. I don't want to talk about it. Well, and you brought it up. All right. Let's go to fight talk. We have the bodies of beard. Hey, listen. Why did I tell that story? I don't know. It's ridiculous. But let Dude, me tell man, you something, I gotta, Callum. I got to shave, man. Dude, you, you, you do got to shave? I, I, the problem but do, is, or or do you have to clean. ship something? <laughs> Which one do you have to do, though? You got to figure it out, you know? Because I was going to ship since some I, stuff. Since I started talking about shaving, I feel like I got to shave. Okay. I, I, okay. I get you. But the thing is, is like I'm using these old razors, so man. So am I. And when I get there... I, f- I mean, if you're a felon, you ain't getting these ra- razors. If you have a history, you ain't getting them. No, you have no. to. Get- it's so hard, man. Well, it's like buying point. drugs. Can I be honest with you? Every time I use my razor, because they're so expensive, I think I, 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 I got to dip it in alcohol because I'm going to get some kind of a infection of bacteria because this razor has been used so many times, and I'm cutting into my skin. It's blunt. I just wish there was a place I could get. I want a fresh shave. I want fresh razors. You mean you mean but you I don't, don't want to pay? I don't want to pay. You know. A thousand dollars for razors. I hear you, man. I don't want to go. It's to the, stressful. I don't want to go to the to the store and have them open the same. I know. With me, I'm like car payment, razors, car payment. That's why I have exactly. beards lately. I guess I won't eat meat this month. We get him in the beard. He can't afford razor. He can't afford this razors. day and age, man. Until I've, now. What? Until, until with you t- DSC. Otherwise, talking about Dollar Shave Club. Of course, I'm, talk- of course I'm talking about Dollar Shave Club, where they drop razors off at your door, where you can have a fresh shave with high quality razors every single time. Kellen, can I hit you? Can I hit your ass with something mind blowing? Yeah. Can I hit your ass with on, something mind blowing? Can I hit your ass with something before, mind blowing? It's better be about shave cream. Because Dude, I want I want something that's gonna really buffer my skin. No, I'm about to like hit your drop. ass with something marvelous. Go ahead. Okay, Go ahead. at dollarshapeclub.com, we've arranged for the Fire and Kid listeners to give the new members a month of executive razors for free. Executive razors for free. You know how nice those are. When you buy a two of Dr. Carver's shave butter, you get free razors. Shave butter. Let me. They rib- give me. They hey, give me cream. They give me butter. They shave give butter. butter. Go and butter up. Dude, I'm going to butter my face. Hold up. on. Let me remind you why oh. millions of others have joined, have joined Dollar Shave Club. DollarShaveClub.com delivers amazing razors right to your door for a third of the price. You keep making that face. It's nice, man. That means when you join Dollar Shave Club, you can afford to shave with a fresh braid anytime braid? you want. Fresh braid. Oh, look who showed up. It's Asian with a, man. You can shave with a, oh, fresh hey, braid. Hey, oh, shave hey, braid. Hey, DollarShaveClub.com. Hey, oh, shave braid. Oh, look at this. Shave braid. Oh, hey, get out of here, Asian guy. I'm sorry. Have a good day. Look at this. Oh, dude, I we can't. We definitely believe- have to edit that out. No, of we don't. I can't believe he came in during the middle of our thing. That's yeah, ridiculous. Not, not, you don't shave with a braid, man. You shave with a blade. God, I, no, sh- no, duh, Asian guy. I, dude, you can't come in here and ruin the freaking set here. We, hey, God, he comes in every now and then. Sorry about the stereotypical. Yeah, I'm Asian sorry. Guy who, he just burst in, dropped off into Panda the, Express. Into the Dollar Shave Club. I read. mean, jeez, man. Uh, listen. So shave butter isn't your average shave cream. It's the only thing you should be putting on your delicious face. It's unique condition formula with high quality, natural ingredients living your skin unbelievably soft and smooth. You heard it. Free razors. And if you're done with shaving, you can spread it on toast. That's right. New members who buy a tube of shave butter. Yeah, don't use it on toast. You get very sick. Worst read ever. New members who buy a tube of shave butter get the executive razor for free. They've never, ever done this before at Shave Club. And it's only available by going to dollarshaveclub.com slash fighter. That's dollarshaveclub.com slash fighter. Dude, 
Unbelievable. What? Like, can we lock the door so the aging guy doesn't come in Sorry and ruin these reads? Sorry about that, buddy. Man. Should we talk a little bit about... Uh, the fight? You talking about the fights? Yeah. You talking about the fights, motherfucker? Who do we have on the... Uh, on the on Frank the, Mir, Mark Hunt. You're rearing tonight. You're, Dude, well, that Asian guy bursting in, ruining the freaking read, uh, man. I know. Sorry. Unbelievable. Sorry. God. Kung Fu lessons aren't to three. Well, Shit. let's definitely put the Asian jokes to a minimum because yeah, we're going to have to edit that. Commercial. We are going to have to. All right. Let's go to fight talk, everybody. The beard. All right, let's do it. So the card is on Saturday. So it's a Saturday card in Australia on FS1. Uh, we'll go through a couple of the fights right now. Let's see what you guys got. Let's go with first fight up, uh, James Tahuna, who hasn't fought in a while. Um, he's fighting Steve Bossy, who you might oh, remember that's a good as fight. the guy who the hockey player got knocked the fuck out. Yeah, hockey player got head kicked into the tenth row. That's right. Didn't Tahuna get arm barred by Nate Mark? Correct. Is that his okay. last fight? Why has he been out for so long? Do we know? I, I'm not sure why he's been out. Hey, no that's reason that guy hey, should be 185. That's a fun fight, though. That thing ain't going all three rounds. If yeah, it is, that was the last one. Fast. That was his last fight. It was against uh, against Nate in June of 2014. Man, I wonder why he took so much time off. Probably got injured. Maybe. Or just needed a break. Or tough to get a fight. No. The UFC. No. What? The UFC. Yeah. Tough to get a fight. Plenty, plenty of fights. Yeah, plenty of fighters. Yeah, a lot of guys. They'll, on the they'll make you fight nonstop if you mm -hmm. if you're up for it. Um, that's a great fight, man. That might yeah. be the fight on the card. Tahuna versus Boss is a fun one. That thing ain't going long though. No, that's a great fight. I'll take Tahuna. He had shoulder surgery and was out for ten months. That'll there you do. go. I'll take Tahuna for sure. Way more Tahuna. experience. Yeah, and Boss. Yeah, the, after that first fight, we got head kicked in Canada. It was not fun. But I like boss. I like obviously I like athletes that come from other sports and try doing this thing. He was an NHL hockey player. Uh, no, he was a minor league hockey player, high level minor league, but minor league nonetheless. Still right. impressive. Yeah, hell yeah. So could, yeah. Have, could have had a worse debut though. No, poor, poor dude. He's mm -hmm. a, I mean, good athlete though. Hopefully it works out for him. But Tahuna's a tough call for your second fight in the UFC, man. Yeah, that guy's a beast. I got Tahuna by KO. They just they just throw you, they throw you right into the fire, don't they? Dude, you shouldn't come to the UFC unless you're ready to God. go on all cylinders. You got to fight those those I'll, veterans. I'll tell you what else you should. Yeah, tell me about it. I'll tell you what else you shouldn't do is take short notice fights. It never pays off. It never pays off. Ask unless my boy Nate Diaz. Well, true. So yeah. well, sometimes it does. Yeah. But if you lose, but Nate's always in shape, and Nate was training for a marathon. It's different. I'm, I'm saying. I'm forever. saying like like remember when John Jones went fight Chael Sonnen, mm -hmm. or uh, a lot of times. You know, when Chris Weidman fought Damian Maya, mm -hmm. ask Chris Weidman about that. Like, uh, ask Tony Sims, who's taken two short notice fights, you know, yeah. and he's and he's lost. Sure. It doesn't work out well for you, man, most of the time. You just don't have time to prepare for it. Well, I forget who fighter. they cut, but the guy goes, really? I took two short notice fights and you released me? I thought, I scratched your back. You was that Ramsey or who was no, that? I forget uh, who that was. He tweeted I out. remember that. Yeah, poor guy. Um, Ramsey too, though. Yeah. A lot of times it ends up pretty, but there's there's pros and cons, right? Like at Diaz, if he did, if he thought that way, he wouldn't have won this mega fight and been a superstar yeah, now. That's right. But there's pros and cons for sure. Wow. But look at Connor, right? Two weeks to go. Oh yeah, that's the other. Yeah, danger. go ahead and switch it up. Well, switch it up with Chad Mendes. Switch it up with Nate Diaz. Like you you've been training for one guy. You up. It's gonna catch up. And then up you got to fight that guy. It's very different. Yeah, yeah, you're right. What else you got, Ev? Uh, next one we've got. This one's headlining the fight pass prelims. This is Ross Pearson. Versus Chad LaPriest. I feel like this is a short notice fight, too. Uh, fight Pass. Is this whole card on Fight Pass? No, it's an FS1. Hmm. But, yeah, Ross Pearson is stepping in to, uh, to fight Chad LaPriest. I don't have Fight Pass. I don't have guy. I think he – no, he – did he win in that season of Tough? I don't have Fight Pass uh -huh. anymore. I illegally download the fights that I want to watch on there. Um, I mean, I take Ross. Ross is my boy. I like Ross, man. His boxing is great. Mm. This is that 45, I assume? Um, 55. Mm. What was the last fight? Was that 45? Uh, listen, I like Ross, man. I like his stand-up, his boxing. That's going to be a fun fight, too. Those are two great Those fights. Those are two bangers, right? What else you got? Uh, next one we'll go to. This is a co-main event. Hector Lombard, Neil Magny. Hector Lombard is back. Neil Magny, that's an interesting matchup. Um, Neil Magny never gets tired. Neil Magny's way taller. Neil Magny has had, uh, I think he's on a win streak of what? He didn't well, just one now because he lost to Damian Maia and then he, oh, right. then he beat Kelvin. Yeah. Uh, Scary look, fight with Kelvin. Look, um, I, I can't, I just can't bet against Hector Lombard. He's so powerful. Hold before you go in. Yeah. New drug testing and he tests positive. He did test positive. Not now. He's, 
What do you mean? Yeah, he tests positive, but he's his he's, last fight he tests yes, positive. Yes. So he's it's very. I'm he's really suspended. interested to see what his body looks like. But let, let's but make let's also fight, make no mistake. He's a beast. The fight anyway. is in Australia. I don't know how the drug testing is there, which oh. is very like. So Lee Serbone, my head coach for a long time, is Neil Magny's coach. So when he called me before this fight got released, he goes, Neil's fighting Hector. I went, I hate this fight, man. He goes, why? I said, for two reasons. Where's it at? I said, if it's in Vegas, I like it. He goes, nope, it's in Australia. I said, I hate that. Hate because that. because you don't know how the commission is. I don't know how, yeah, test. I don't know how the Granted, Vada randomly drug tests everyone, but I, I don't know how it is in Australia. It's different. If it's in the States, we're talking about different so, things. So, so Hector is training in the United States. Vada, whoever it is, can, can check. 365 days a year, okay. anytime they want. Okay. So the, That's only how time they, the only time they can't ostensibly check him is when he's in Australia. Is that correct? It's tough because you have to. They don't do, have jurisdiction there. Or? No, they do. They anywhere in the world. Okay, but you have to tell them where you're at. It's it's tricky, man. And well, the states can make it easier. If, well, so this is the sure, thing. He's this, probably not doing steroids right now, right? Who knows? Yeah, I don't know. But it'd be a big risk because he'd be in big trouble. They're, they figure out different stuff, my man. Yeah, sure. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Doctors are, I'm not, and maybe I'm not saying he's on stuff. Saying yeah. he's been tested. So let's get past all that. Fuck PEDs. Fuck all that. I'm sick of talking about that. But Hector Lombard versus Neil Magny is a t bad matchup for Neil. And everyone knows I love Neil, yeah. but Neil does not use his distance. Well, he never has. You look at the Kelvin fight, dude, what are you doing? What do you, mm -hmm. you know, he almost got finished in that fight. He gets in these scrambles. Yeah. It's not good. Hector Lombard, if he gets a hold of you, oh, you're, you're going, going for, for a ride. ride. Going for a ride. So it, it, the, the huge X factor here is can, can Neil weather the storm early in the first or second round? Right. If he can't. Because Neil in. doesn't get tired. So if Neil can weather that storm for the first two rounds, Hector will slow down in the third round. It would, it would have to be the first round. If he can buy the first round, he's going to be all right. Second, third, man, you're going to have to go to work. Yeah. Uh, that first round, I tell Neil, stay on your back foot, use your jab. Just keep Don't him away with the jab. Keep your, let do him, not get let him, him wear out. Let him throw these bombs. Do, do not let him get a hold of your hips. Do not let him get an underhook, so, which so, Neil's not very good at doing. Okay, so 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 when you say don't get a, let him get a hold of your hips or your on, or underhooks, because Hector's a ju judo guy, yeah, and he gets you against the fence. How do you? What would you tell him about the clinch game? There, would you tell him to don't keep, engage, keep his hips away? Yes, you post on the hips and you disengage. Okay. You don't play any. There's you don't do there's the no, over there's under. No, there's, there's no there's judo. no grappling. There's no grappling because you, you're going the, the way you beat ride. judo players. You got to control the hips. Keep when them. You keep start the hips hand, away. When you start hand fighting, you're getting tossed. Okay. Don't let them load their hips up and toss you. I, I don't like the fight for Neil. He does. But then, not, by the way, when your hands he does are down, not use his reach, reach well. When your hands are down on Hector's hips. You better be ready for him to unload in your face. Well, then you're out. Okay. Because as soon as he lets go of another strike, right. you get out. Okay. You can't do both. Right. You're not going to have others in punching. Right. It's one or the other. Okay. So as soon as you post on the hips, he goes to throw. I get the fuck out or I take Hector down. I shoot a double and take Ooh. him down. Okay. But it's a tough fight for Neil, I man. would imagine he's much stronger than Neil. Um, I don't know how strong Neil is. I don't know. Yeah. He's thin. Neil's, Neil's strong. He's, he's I'm, sure, I'm sure he's got yeah. leverage. You don't go on a seven-fight win streak and not be strong. Yeah. In the UFC. Yeah. Yeah. And he doesn't get tired. Doesn't he get, which is a huge, huge thing for him. Yes. So keep him away on, with the jab. What's the, th what's the second round? What's the advice for the second round? Uh, start to open up a little more. Start using the right hand a little more. Go to the body. I'd go to the body on Hector a lot. Is that hard to do with a shorter guy? No, because he's open for it the way he stands. Mm. If you can be smart about it, you set it up with a jab and start working the body with hooks, you know, mm. and then get out. But don't sit there. Right. I would, I would, the, for, for, for Neil to win, it's not going to be entertaining. Mm -hmm. Fuck entertainment here. You got to be smart. Scary fight for anybody. What? Scary fight. Might be the scariest guy in the division. Uh, Hector I, Lombard I, at 170? 170 is crazy. The fuck? Phenomenal athlete. Yeah. Take PEDs out of it. That guy's a monster with or without him. How does he do against Wonderboy Thompson? Hector? Yeah. How does Hector do against Robbie Lawler? These are the fights I want to see. I th see, it's interesting. I, I like his chances. Yeah. If Hector Lombard gets a hold of you, yeah. you're going for a ride. Whether you're Robbie Lawler, Wonderboy Thompson, Roy McDonald, you're going for a ride, man. Those are I, I, We've yet to see him fight those three guys you talked about. He fought Nate Marquardt when it was— Yes, he did. You know? Yes, he did. Didn't go well. Uh, <laughs> but, 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 but Roy McDonald, uh, well, I would love to see Hector Roy's Lawler Roy's fighting go. Wonderboy now. That's going to be very interesting. Great fight. That's going to be really interesting. I got Wonder Boy as the the future champion. I, I would put all my money on it. I I'm going to make a call. I think Wonder Boy Thompson not only becomes the 170 pound champion because I think he beats Robbie Lawler. I think he stays there for a long time. 
see, I th- I think he could beat Robbie Lawler. That's a good matchup. That's a close one. I think R- I think Roy McDonald beats him. Why is that? Roy's so smart, and they've trained together. Yeah. And Wonder Boy start at TriStar under Faraz. I just don't know how Rory deals so they've, with, they've with, seen his, it. with his leg reach with those. Rory, Rory has picks. seen it before, though. He's seen it. You before. remember at TriStar, they, you know, yeah. the way the way the way Wonder Boy the, the way the way the way Wonder Boy got his start is with George St. Pierre and TriStar with Faraz, right? And Rory was there mm-hmm. with GSP, so they've they they've sparred seen some it. rounds. I would imagine the way to deal with someone like Wonder Boy is to get in close and and jam those kicks. You cannot stand on the it, outside. There's not a lot of guys smarter than Rory McDonald. Yeah. Very smart, but doesn't take chances. Stays behind the jab. Yeah. Those kicks are gonna be tough to pull off on him. Because he's gonna crowd you. He's gonna. He's gonna. Cram, he's gonna jam you. But that, now here's an X factor: Is Roy McDonald the same fighter after that five rounds with fucking Robbie Lawler? He's had that a lot of time to recover. War. He's had a lot of time to recover. How long? When, ask, when did he fight? Santos. That was a while ago. But Astro Santos, who had a ton of time. Yeah. But there's some fights that you you're never the same. You take one step back. Now Roy's young, but he's had a lot of fights. Yeah. So we don't know what Roy we're gonna get. Rory's a beast though. He's very smart. Yeah. So that's it. That for, to me, out of all the matchups for Wonder Boy, that and I said this on the fighting pain, that's the worst matchup for him. Now he gets past that, we go in Sizzler. We go in Sizzler. We go in Sizzler, baby. How does he do against Hector Lombard? Does he do the same thing that Hector he did to Johnny Hendricks? Yep. That's what it feels like. Yep. Yeah. That's what it feels like. <sighs> what else you got? Well, I'm rooting for my boy Neil. And listen, I like Hector Lombard too, man. If he didn't test positive for PDs, I I'd like to see him get a title shot. Me too. He wins this one. He's right back in the game. Hector Lombard. 170? Beast. 170? <sighs> you better come correct. Better come correct. Look, Thanks, Hector man. Lombard could go up to 185 and be a, a real factor. Well, he fought at 185. I know. He could he could give anybody in the 185-pound division, including What, 170 is doing Rockhold. great. Exactly. I'm just saying that in either, way, in either, in either category. Rockhold's too mad. big for him. Is he too big? Too big, too strong. Really? Different animal. Man. I'm telling you, man. I saw Hector Lombard in a pair of tights. We both did in Vancouver we both did. when we were there for my fight. Yeah, he was in a pair of uh, sweats. I've sweats. I've never seen a couple one two honey melons in my life. You would have thought that he had a fake ass. This yeah. thing, boom boom. Yeah, he's a beautiful ass. He's the original boom boom pal. Yeah, he's the original boom boom <laughs> pal. He's if he was a girl, we'd be all over him. What? He's just all tits and ass. Straight Hector's up. all tits. Good and looking ass. dude. Good looking dude. Animal. And he's got a, a, a the color of skin. He's got a like an almost Are you like talking a, about that caramel skin? It's it's caramel orange. Like you talking a, about that caramel? Yeah, yeah. There's a it's such a unique Beautiful color. Beautiful man. Yeah. Like a and brick we'll rip like a your brick brown. Face off. Yes. We'll rip your fucking face yes, off. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. Yeah. Hector Lombard is I remember scary fight him. for Neil. I can't think of a scary fight for Neil at 170. When they told me, I'm like, God damn it. Why do they, <laughs> do, that? Why do, they do that to when the When you gazelle? draw that card, when you draw Dude, that card as a fighter, what is that like? You've been there. Oh, my God. There's yeah. nothing worse than when they, you know, whoever they tell you, hey, or I, I'll never forget, Le- whenever I'd get a fight, I'd get a call from Lex. If I didn't answer, I knew it was a fight because he just texted me, call me. And I'm like, oh, here we go. You're nervous. Oh. So I answer, what's up? Hey, hey, amigo, uh, got a fight here. It's a good one. It's a good one. I'm not. I'm not gonna lie to you. It's a tough one. But if you win this one, we're right back on track. Blah blah. You know all that stuff. And then you know it'd be whoever, uh, Nogueira, Crow Cop, Gonzaga, uh, Travis Brown. I remember when they called me Travis Brown. I was like, really? That makes sense. I remember when I was on the beach surfing and I had 17 missed calls. I'm like, oh shit, something's going from the UFC and my manager. So I call my manager. Always call the manager first. Never call UFC. So I call. I'm like, Lex, what's up? He's like, we got to fight, my man. This is going to be a tough one for you. I'm like, ah, tough one. Why? He goes, well, not that. Granted, he's very good, but you've trained with him. He's one of your heroes. I went, no. F-. I knew right away. I went, Arlovsky? He goes, yeah. I went, the UFC signed him. He goes, yep. And you're the first one to get a crack. And I'm, I'm like, fuck. And I get done, and every fight, I'd hang up the phone and just start running. I'd run <sighs> to deal with the stress. You start running. Start running. I remember my first test, I beat Chris Tushisher, right? Which for me was a big deal because he's 20 and one, tough dude. And they go, I remember my manager, Lex, at the time goes, dude, you're going to, your next one's going to be tough because you keep knocking guys out. They're not going to keep feeding you these big boys. So he, he goes, we got one, man. I go, who is it? He goes, Gabriel Gonzaga. I remember I, my jaw dropped, hung up the phone to start. I probably ran 12 miles. 
midnight at night. <laughs> Seriously? 12 miles. <sighs> Dude, terrifying. Well, it's just like this. I don't even know how to describe it. You get this feeling where it's just like, <gasps> yeah. and there's no turning back. Mm -mm. The only fight I, I didn't turn down, but I just lost to Noguera. They called me like two months later with a fight. I forget the guy's name. He wasn't very good. He's this big guy. It, it was kind of a gimme fight for me, and I didn't want to take it. I've always been this way. Yeah. And I went, what? No, I need someone tougher than that, which at the time I probably should have taken their advice, taken the easy route. Sure. Instead, I got Ben Rothwell. That's that guy is just and I and I thought it was gonna be an easy fight oh, for me. He's, he's so indestructible. Didn't respect him at all. He's so indestructible. This is young Brendan. Didn't respect him. I thought I was gonna murk him. God, Ben Rothwell. So I go in there, I throw a spinning elbow, wobble him, and then rush in. You, you guys know how that went. But what went with silly Brendan? Ben, ben Rothwell is in line for a title shot. Oh yeah, he, he fights Junior Dos Santos in. Uh, I forget, I forget. It's the next fight. It's the next card after this. It's a, I want he's an awkward fighter. If he beats, if he beats Dos Santos, he, he's, he's title shot. He's an awkward fighter. He does his stuff. Good and guy. And he's huge. And he's so big. People gosh. don't. Let, I remember he was the first time. I was like, Jesus Christ. He's giant. He's huge. Yeah. And, he's big. and athletic. He's, he, he's big. He's tough. Yeah. He's choking guys out. He has so much experience. Yeah. Experience is priceless. Yeah. It's funny you see these. He doesn't panic. Like he just no. He's been, sits well, he's, in he the cut. 40, 50 fights. But the thing is, you see these guys with these career resurgence, right? Like you, you see the resurgence, yeah. Yeah, you see Rothwell, who I think we chalked up. Ah, eh, he's not gonna do anything. Andre Olaski, ah, eh, he's not gonna do anything. Verdum, ah, eh, he's basically. You see these guys, yeah, with these come momentum back. and comeback. Yeah, that must that must eat at you a little yes. bit. Yes, yeah, hundred percent. Because you just know. I mean, well, the, what's tough for me is I'm in my prime right now, as far yeah. as knowledge, experience. Yeah. Um, just being smart about fighting the business side. If you went back, who would be your who would be your training camp? If you went back, I, I can't even tell you, man. You, you you wouldn't go to Rafael Cordero or one of those guys. What would you do? I don't know. I I, I haven't Dick thought Rufus, about it. Any of those guys? I haven't thought yeah. about it because yeah. for me, I would have to leave LA, stop doing all our, our big yeah, entertainment yeah, yeah, stuff. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. It's, it's tough. Just not realistic. But yeah, this the hundred percent. I think about it. Yeah, a good amount. Yeah. The the the, the thing is though. In the UFC, what's the upside? To be second, to be third is still not necessarily. It, 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 you're still paying a big price. You're paying a big price physically, and you're paying a big price. Uh, Even if you're champ, you're paying a big price yeah. physically. I just. Yeah. There, like when we were watching the fights over Frank's house, and I saw Connor lose, and I, I saw guys walk out to the octagon, I don't miss that, man. Yeah. I, I was so that. scared. I was so scared. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think uh, you're doing the right thing. And I, I just had all these guys in the room, uh, Evan and Keely and Brennan, watch uh, something we did with the Fighter and the Kid 3D. Uh, and I think it's going to be one of the best things on the web, period. I said it out loud, and Ooh. I mean it. And your acting is good. You're doing a great job. Trying, man. Uh, let's go to the main event. Main event. Main event. Frank Mir, Mark Hunt. Battle of the Big boy Boys. boy, Frank Mir. Well, if it was a shootout, Frank Mir would win. If it was a knife off or a shootout, Frank Mir always has five guns and seven knives on him. Uh, and, and I have two numbers stored in my phone speed dial. If in, if Armageddon happens, A, Tim Kennedy's number one. Yeah, and, and then Frank Mir. B, then probably Frank Mir. Yeah. But Frank might be third because I got Brian Stan as B. I'm I'm with you on on because because Tim Kennedy and Brian Stan have so much combat and they're and not crazy. Experience. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, well, um, Frank cramping uh, cramp. I, you know, you know, I, you know, Frank. Since I met Frank, and I hung out with Frank, I gotta go with Frank. Frank's one of my heroes because I love Frank. So Frank, Frank knows Mir I love him. I love his game. Frank's been on a freaking hot streak lately. Yeah. Um, Frank wants to fight five more years. Hey, Frank, let this let's be not your do last that. fight. Well, is that fair? What if he beats him? Oh, well, I, I he's don't. On a win streak. I don't want Frank to have brain issues. And too so. late. Um. Yeah. Maybe after 15 years of fighting, he would admit that. Yes. Yeah. Uh, He's not on a win streak. He lost that decision to Arlovsky. Oh, that's right. He was on that a boring ass fight. That. Yeah. That's right. He beat. He knocked out Duffy. He knocked out Bigfoot Silva. Lost to Arlovsky, and now he's fighting Mark Hunt. Right. Listen, Mark Hunt when he fought Stipe looked terrible. We've never seen him so bad. Yeah. He's lost weight. What a tough fight to call. If Frank fights the way he did against Orlovsky and and Todd Duffy, it's gonna be a short night for him, because Frank's in. This is what bothers me. It's gonna be a short night for Frank. Yes, Frank's in love with his box right now. Yeah, he, he thinks he's a, a boxer. Yeah, 
You know who you don't box with? Mark, Mark Hunt. Hunt. Why? Because Mark's because so he can right eat, hand is so unforgiving. He can eat ten of your shots. One of his will send your head to fucking New Zealand. That's so weird to me. So 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 Mark Hunt. So Mark Hunt could eat Frank Mir's shots. Oh yeah. That's so crazy. How, oh, how and Mark Hunt knocked out Roy Nelson with an uppercut. Yeah. Yeah, no, no, you're going to That's sleep. That's a feat that should be in the Bible. Yeah, I you're mean, going you're going to sleep if you fight. Um, if Well, if you trade with him, you're going to sleep. Yeah, and Frank said that he's been working on He's obsessed boxing. with his boxing, yeah, which worries me. Because yeah. when he, he told me about this matchup at our live show in Vegas, I went, interesting. But then he proceeded to tell me about how good his boxing is. So when I hear that, I go, oh, well, no, I get that, but... Your jiu-jitsu, if I'm calculating this thing, your jiu-jitsu is light years ahead of Mark Hunt. You got to get him down. This is what I do as a Frank Mir. It's scary as a heavyweight. You jump to guard. You pull half guard with Mark Hunt. You close the distance, get an underhood, underhook, and you pull Mark Hunt on top of you. Really? 100%. Wow. If I'm Frank Mir and my fucking guard is that nasty, I play half guard with Mark Hunt. I pull half guard. Really? But the, but the, then what do you do from half guard? Because Mark I Hunt submit can him. ground and Just like him. I submitted, if I, this is Frank Mir talking, if I'm Frank Mir, I submitted Brock Lesnar. Brock Lesnar, Noguera, broke his arm. Yes. Tim Sylvia. I mean, what are you talking about? He's going he's gonna to go to work down But there. Frank is a fighter, and Frank probably wants to use his tools, his boxing. His tools, jiu-jitsu in this. Yes. He knows that. Frank's a very smart guy. He knows a loss would, I mean, basically be lights out. For Frank's him. a very smart guy. Very, very educated fighter. So you're saying you think that Frank should 100% literally pull Mark Hunt on top of him? Yes. Wow. Which you said he should have done with Daniel DC. Cormier. Mm -hmm. I don't get it. If my half guard and my ground game, and I'm not good off my back. Bring him to your back. What are you, you going to take DC down? Nope. You're going to outbox DC? It's going to be tough. Yeah. Because he's just going to make it dirty. Are you going to, uh, who? you know what I'm saying? All, yeah. all these guys. Yeah. With Mark Hunt, pull him on top of you, man. Get him into your world where you're comfy. And see how it goes. Yeah. He's not Mark Hunt's A, there's zero submission threat for Frank Mayer down there with Mark Hunt. He's not gonna ground and pound you. It's not his thing. He's just gonna try standing up. Yeah. And hopefully with when he panics, when you pull him down like that because he's not expecting it, you catch a leg. You catch a leg. You go you get back you have fun in Australia, get back on the plane, zero damage, get your paycheck, on to the next fight. I like the way you think. Yeah. Well I, I Frank take some heat for it. You heard it here. Jump to half guard. Don't box him. Hell no. Uh, who do you have in the fight, though? Frank Mir. Yeah, we got to go with Frank, don't we? Got to go with Frank. He's our boy. My heart says Frank Mir. My mind says Mark Hunt. Because if Frank Mir tries to box, his head's going to be with the kangaroos. But Mark... Head's going to be with the kangaroos. Head's going to be with the kangaroos. Well... Dude, I will. how however, fucking however, gnarly are kangaroos? Yeah, I mean, Can we talk about kangaroo for a second? Aru, aru. Talking about aru, aru. Aru will the, only the males. Females won't fight. The males. They won't. No. Nope. You ever seen a tail on one of them aru's? Aru's got a tail. Talking about aru, aru. Aru will kick you. Not the females, but the males. Dude, I've seen them fucking box people up. Yeah, you know why females don't fight? Because they keep their babies right there. Now, um, here's a question for you. That pouch is it all fur? Is it like a blanket or is it all squishy inside? Squishy inside. Ah, oh, man. Yeah. I believe it's very squishy inside. It's wet? Yeah, I believe so. You think? Yeah. They have a pouch, or like yeah. a bag. Yeah. And it's squishy. Isn't that weird that they have a bag? I know. It makes hey, sense. Hey, Evan, that. look up what the inside of a ruse pouch is like. Yeah, because is it like a velvet blanket? Because I think it's fur on fur. No, I think it's vagina. Like it's like uh, the. Well, that's disgusting. Well, I, I would. You know what? You had me on board with these roux, and now I'm off. Yeah, I think the roux is nice and wet and warm. I'm gonna go with wet and, and the, warm. And you know what? You call a baby kangaroo a joey. I didn't know that. A joey. Yep. Aww. Baby kangaroo's called a joey. Isn't How's Tiger? Weird? He's good, man. He's getting big. He is. Little tag. Strong shits. Yeah, strong shits. Yeah, I had to watch them all this morning by myself. Really? Yeah. Papa Shad, good with babies. What's up? Inside of a kangaroo's pouch is not pleasant looking. What's you it got look a video? You got a There's picture? A bunch of like nipples in there, and it's like mostly hairless. It's just kind of pink skin and nipples. Are, are you talking about the perfect mother factory then? Yeah. It's just lined with nipples for him to get milk? Pretty much, yeah. It's brilliant. Nips. It's brilliant, really. Nips everywhere. Let me see. Uh, let's go to current events. 
current events with Evan, Evan the body in the room. Dude, I got to send a bunch of stuff. I got to remind me to go to the post office later today. I got to get out there. And, Bro, how and, uh, many times I got to get stamps. I got to get stamps. <sighs> and also I got to I got to mail a bunch of stuff. So remind Brian, me, I don't want to I don't want to wait in that line. I got to be there before. You're thinking like a small five. business, man. They think it's expensive for a postage meter and then you got to go to the post office. Well, yeah, because I got to go get. Money. You're wrong. What? What? There's stamps.com. You huh? silly man. Stamps.com. Yeah, stamps.com. Easily print postage for any letter or package using just your computer and printer from home or wait, your wait, office. Hold on, hold on. I can. I can yeah. How do you computer, think our fans get on my computer? And if they send me official U.S. postage paper, and I can actually print out stamps. Yeah, from my silly boy. Computer at home. That's right, man. Stamps.com. Yeah, but how has do I know how much it weighs, dude? I, don't, I gotta, I gotta make sure that the package is the right weight. Shut your know. yapper, and I'll tell you. I got a lot of questions. Stamps.com has no hidden fees like a meter ink charges or reset fees. No extra hardware to buy. No long-term silly contracts. Stamps.com can save you at least, at least fifty percent off. 50%, 50 off. percent off. Plus, do more with stamps.com than you can with a meter, like sending packaging, package tracking info to receipt with one click. The choice is clear. Stamps.com. Stamps.com. Stamp it. Stamp it. Stamp it.com. Stamp it.com. Right now, sign up for stamps.com. Use our promo code FIGHTER with a special offer. Four week free trial plus a $110. Bonus offer including postage and a digital scale, Brian. Yeah, you're wondering yeah. how you're gonna weigh things. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna give you a digital scale. Yeah, yeah. Don't wait. Go to stamps.com before you do anything else. Click on the microphone at the top of the page. Type in fighter. That's stamps.com. Enter fighter. Don't go to the post office, you silly people. Biatches. Biatches. All right. Uh current events with Evan the Cub the Beard. Evan. Yeah, I saw on your uh, Instagram that you post another picture with you and all your motorcycle friends. Yes, I did. Now, yeah. you guys are all in leather and motorcycles every weekend. <laughs> I was wearing I'd the like same jacket to, I am right now. And you're drinking out of the same cup with long straws. Is there something you want to tell we us? We also about saw it? that. You and a friend sharing oh, a daiquiri yeah. with one straw. Hell yeah. <laughs> oh hell yeah! Hell yeah! Hell <laughs> yeah! Now, after after the Dak race and the motorcycle race, you only need one the... straw ever. You're right. Now, when after you got all that, was there any? Uh... Did you guys play motorcycle? Hey, are you are you are you throttling dicks? Yes. Is that what this is? Yes. Yeah. Were you throttling? <laughs> I think the question is me, me and Callan motorboat. You motorcycle. Were yeah. you motorcycling? Were you throttling Wang? <laughs> After a long ride? But of course. <laughs> were you revving it up? By mm -hmm. revving it up, I mean, were you jerking it off in your face? No, listen, man. Did you have fun, though? I did. Yeah. Good. Went up to it Ohio. looked fun. A nice ride out there. Where'd you go? Ohio. Ooh, it's nice. Have you been to Ohio? Uh, many times. Me too. It's nice out Got there. Got married in Ohio. Did you? Yeah, I sure did. I went Ohio there with Valley a girlfriend one time. <sighs> Not the best night of my life. Uh, <laughs> Kay, what'd you do this weekend? Uh, yesterday, I went to the Laker game. Ooh. Yeah, who'd they play? Fun. The Knicks. Did you have good tickets? I did. That's Very fun. Good. You went with your man? My man and my mom and my sister. Oh, dang. Mm -hmm. I took the plane over with uh, Mr. Rick Fox, speaking of Lakers and former Lakers, uh, who's going to come on the show. Uh, and it's funny because Rick... Original dime piece, Rick Fox. Yeah, Rick Fox has still got it going on. Rick is... Uh, I, I We get on, they call Isn't us on... He a commentator somewhere? Yeah, he's doing a show. We go to do... He, he was going to South by Southwest, so we're going to Dallas together. And we get on a plane... And he's ahead of me, and I'm behind him as we get called on the plane. As he walks on, he's the first guy to walk on the plane. The stewardesses, to see them light up when they saw Oh, he's the a handsome man. feller. And I sat right behind him. And then they looked at me, and they were like, oh, hi, how are you? You're a regular guy. But <laughs> They Rick, look at you like you weren't shit. Rick is a stud. It's hard to compete with Rick Fox. Well, he's six foot seven, uh, two. 60 good looking dude and all, all uh, all right yeah, what do you got just, just remember, he was just on uh he was on that show shameless he oh played, was he he literally played the role of a guy who needed to hire us a, uh, a scary black guy so he hired rick fox oh nice that's great mm, makes sense rick's too yeah. good looking to be humongous scary. but yeah a little too good looking for the role I thought. he's a little too handsome to be a scary black yeah. guy yeah but he beat your ass he's an athlete who's ass? not yours yes. watch, watch your mouth <laughs> And just because he's an athlete doesn't mean he can fight. It's true. When you grow up with Golden Spoon, usually means you can't fight, did especially up, when you're good looking. Did he grow up wealthy? Well, you're so good at basketball. Yeah. You're not really fighting on the streets. That's true. Yeah. That's true. What do you got, Ev? All right. First current event we got, they uh, they announced the Dancing with the Stars lineup for 2016. Inter a couple interesting picks out there. What do we got? One, there's Von Miller. 
Oh. And Antonio Brown. So we got NFL. Oh. Now here's where it gets interesting. Paige Van Zandt. I saw that. Paige is going to fuck that competition. Well, she up. was a she danced, I guess, when she was younger. Yeah, she did. Her her parents owned a da- uh, owned a dance studio. Oh boy. Oh boy. So she's we she's got a favorite. The By the way, not to mention I'd like to be on cutie. It's that one. Dance on the Stars. Oh, you'd be good at it. Oh, you'd kill it on Dance. You'd be really good at it. I feel like we could get you on there. I feel like we could too. I'd love it. Let's get me on. Be cool if we could both be on there. Be great dancing with the Stars. Doug Flutie's on it too. Okay, Uh, well, you had me. You had me. (laughs) Great athlete. Great athlete. Forty years ago, yes, he was, Brian. Yeah. Um, man, what a great cast. Obviously, I'm rooting for Paige on this one. She should win. She should be the favorite. I don't think she is. When I I looked at like the ga- like the gambling line, she's like a plus eight hundred. Because of her following, she doesn't have a big following. Who's I don't. Um, Mark, Mark, whatever. I don't know the show. But dude, but him. Vaughn Miller. Uh, no, I mean Antonio Brown. Talk about an athlete. It'd be very interesting to see how he takes to dance. He's the best receiver in the NFL. I mean, Emmett Smith won his season, didn't he? Yeah. So did uh, another football player. Didn't Troy. Uh, Polamalu? No, Troy. Fucking uh, the receiver. Uh, God oh, damn. Troy Williams. No, no, Ward. Didn't uh, Ward Han- win uh, Andre Ward. No, no, no. No, uh, Heinz Ward. Troy Ward. No, Heinz, Heinz Ward. Ward. Yeah. Didn't Heinz Ward win it? Heinz is a weird name. Yeah, it is. Heinz Ketchup. Heinz Ward. Um, either way, I, dude, I feel like Paige should be the favorite because of her dancing background. She's is that a, his name, Heinz she, Ward? Yeah, Am I right? Yeah, Heinz so Ward. Weird. She's a straight dime piece. Her ba- dancing background, dime piece. The freaking well, what's different now because they pushed it with Chuck Liddell when he was on there. I think he was the first voted off. Kim Kardashian was the first voted off too. That's crazy. Speaking of the MMA people dancing, did you see Randy Couture on um, the, that show? Spike Tim, Kim was on recently yeah, too. Yeah, the Spike. Uh, yeah, lip sync battle. Yeah, lip sync battle. Oh, that was rough. Was he bad? Oh, he was. I, I've never seen the show. I mean, you know. I saw, a clip, I saw a clip of Tim Anderson yeah. in the show, though. Cool that he got out there and did something like that, I guess. But, he, I mean, he looked like a mid-50s-year-old man with a shitload of miles on him trying to dance. That's embarrassing. It's really sad. Sounds like me. It was no Brian. Uh, He's no Brian Callen. No. Right. What else you got, Ev? Yeah, I got Paige as the favorite in that for sure. Can't wait to dance on that show. Uh, next one. This is – I don't know. I, I assume you know this already, but I'm sure you all have a lot to say on it. Matt Mitrione signed with Bellator. When did that get announced? Uh – Today the 14th, then today. Do we know anything about his contract? Let's see what we got here. So, Matt Mitrione is leaving for Bellator MMA. I'll tell you why it's smart. uh, The UFC chose not to match. So, Mitrione had an offer on the table from Bellator. UFC chose not to match. Um, And that's pretty much all we have on it right now, other than... Hey, Matt texted me and said, hey, thanks for picking... Uh, against me or something, and I was like, I didn't pick. Didn't I call? Didn't I choose him for that fight? Which against Travis Brown? Yeah, I, we I, both I, did. I thought. Yeah, we both did. Who knows? He said you guys picked against me. I was like, no, we didn't. Never. Hell no. We thought he was gonna win. Yeah. I said if he gets his head on right, you never know what Matt's gonna come. Well, he got poked in the eye twice. Yeah, they sh- that should be a no contest. Um, listen, I'll tell you why it's smart for Matt to sign with Bellator. A, I love Matt. B, Matt's not that young. Uh, Matt. Most likely was never going to be a UFC heavyweight champion in the world. He just wasn't. Just didn't have the wrestling? Didn't have the match experience? Who knows? Yeah. Who knows? Well, I'm not going to get into his skill set. Yeah. But in Bellator, Matt could be champion in, oh, what time is it? 12, 30 right now? He could be champ by 1 o'clock. Is that right? So, yes. There's no one better than Matt in Bellator, not even close. He could beat all of them up in the same night. Jeez. Hate to say it. That includes Congo. That includes the Russian. The Russian kid's probably going to be his toughest matchup. But in you can say, well, Congo beat Matt before. I get that. It's a different game now. I think if Matt fought him right now, Matt knocks him out. So uh, Matt's going to be world champion, Bellator. If he brings it, again, if Matt puts his head on right and he wants to be there and he wants to fight, he's going to be champ. He's going to be a world champion. And obviously the money's way better. Good. So it's smart by Matt. It's a smart decision to do. If you want to make money, you want good fights, and you want to keep, you know, in a right direction. And also Bellator is owned by Viacom. You remember that. So they have a lot of programming that Matt, you know, who has a mouthpiece could be good for to break down fights, to do other shows. So in the, for Matt, it's the best choice for his career and his family. Yeah. Good. Wish him well. What else you got, Ev? All right. So we've got another one coming out of the sports world. 
Uh, so Johnny Manziel got officially, finally, cut by the Browns and placed on waivers. He completely cleared waivers. Not one team has shown any interest yeah. at all. Damn, yeah. that's is a, his that's... career possibly Fuck. actually over? What already? Yeah, because what? he's such a it's it's, a, it's almost the Tim Tebow syndrome. And you're like, what? They're not even the same. No, the Tim Tebow syndrome, where if you, when you bring on the media like the, a guy like Johnny Manziel does, and you're not going to be the starter, teams don't want to deal with it. So to sign Johnny Manziel, it's going to be a huge, huge deal in the media. So that takes away from what the team's really trying to pursue, and that's win a Super Bowl. So when you sign a guy like Johnny Manziel, it's a huge risk. And he keeps fucking up, man. He, he's not taking it serious. He doesn't put the time in. There's a hundred guys out there who are better than him who aren't going to do that. So, so, but, but, but Johnny Manziel he's has never performed the potential either. to be Drew Brees, doesn't he? That, I mean, that's a big – that's a big – How did he do his first two years as a quarterback? Not good. But also, he got thrown into the – he shouldn't have been playing. You look at you look at like Aaron Rodgers who sat on the bench behind Brett Favre for all those years and learned the game. Yeah. You look at a guy like Brock. By Osweiler, the way, that's a good. You look point. at a guy like Brock Osweiler who sat behind Peyton Manning and then now he just signed thirty seven million guaranteed to the Houston Texans. So he shouldn't have been playing. So we're used to seeing these guys like um, pick a guy, uh, a guy like Kaepernick or a guy like Russell Wilson who were like, you know what? Oh, you got to be like that. Man, those guys are few and far between. Uh, uh, to be an NFL quarterback, you got to learn the steps, man. Yeah. You got to take. And looking time. at what happened with Kaepernick, Kaepernick has some challenges. Know, but then you look at Russell Wilson, who's amazing. Not everyone's a Russell Wilson. Not yeah. everyone's a John Jones. A lot of guys need experience and confidence. Yes. So I think if Johnny Manziel landed on the right team, he could be all right. Same with Mark Sanchez. Somebody's got to pick him up. They might take. They might bring him to camp. I can see the Dallas Cowboys bring him to camp. To be honest with you, oh, or Denver Broncos. But you when look, you, you say look, camp because I'm ignorant to football. Yeah. Explain that. So if a team brings you to camp, you know you're not, you're not guaranteed anything. You're not, you know you might the sign you whatever two year deal, but you guys still got to make the team. You're not gonna guaranteed anything. Damn. Yeah. So you still got to try out. You might come in at uh, you, know, you might come in. There's five quarterbacks. They only can keep two. So you got to <sighs> earn your job. It's different. Um. Listen, man. I I, I like what. Mark Sanchez going to Denver, you know, a lot of times guys, they just end up on shitty teams, so their careers don't seem as good as they should be. A guy like Mark Sanchez, you surround him with the, the power in Denver, it's gonna, you're looking at a different guy, especially with good offense. I, I asked Urban Meyer, um, I asked his son-in-law um, what makes Urban so, such a winner. Yeah. And one thing about Urban Meyer is just spending the little time I did with him this weekend. That dude is so charismatic. And his son-in-law said, look, the guy is such a natural leader. His his players would walk through fire for him. They would run through a wall. For and him. and and he is about the human spirit and the and and he's about motivating everyone to motivate everyone else. Wait, to do, excellence. wait, wait do you see the culture that he's? I'm gonna created. read his book. Wait, do you see I, the I culture that, the that he's created? Yeah, yeah. You get it from him. Mm -hmm. He's such a positive, charismatic dude. He's he's just. Like I, I don't play football and I just wanted to please him. Like I literally He's called my agent best. and I said, get me to Columbus, Ohio. I want to make him laugh. Like he yeah. was, if he liked what I did at Tim Tebow's thing, I can't imagine what's going to happen to him. I'm going to destroy the him. Best. I literally just text back and forth him this morning. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It was, we'll it, was it was awesome. Yeah. I don't know how famous he is cause I don't follow college football and I didn't grow up in this country, but he's as big as it gets. Yeah. But what a great guy. And he loves his daughter. And he loves his son-in-law. And he loves his wife. That guy's just a family dude. It's the best. You know? yeah. Literally one of the best humans on this earth. Yeah. It's, 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 it's really impressive. That was a treat to meet him and hang out with him. That made the whole weekend worth it, by the way. Just to, it was worth it. Just to hang out and make his ass I'm laugh. I'm glad you got to meet him, man. Yeah. How long have I been telling you how good of a person he is? Yeah. We'll get him back he's on the, the best, podcast. Man. Urban Meyer. And he's a guy, you know, he's... I mean, they don't get much bigger than him. I can text him after any game, and he'll reply back. Thanks, man. Jeez. Before the last championship, I went, hey, good luck. You know. Well, he likes you, man. He's, he's yeah. just impressed with you being a fighter. Yeah, I yeah. love him. Uh, what else, you guys? Is that it, Ev? We'll do, uh, we'll get, we got one more I wanted to get Brian's take on. Um, I'll keep it kind of short in the terms of the description of this. But basically, uh, Trump rally in Chicago got canceled. Be it, it just a million fist fights broke out at a Trump rally, basically. Yeah. Is like, what the fuck is going on? I'm sure you've got something. Some well, I think it, it points to um, Trump has been very, very offensive to some people, especially people of color. Um, and I think that there's a conception or perception, real or imagined, that his supporters are, quote unquote, 
uh, racial, white race, racial bigots, uh, rednecks, uh, whatever you want to call it. I do think Trump represents a group of Americans that are, I think, if anything, this entire campaign essentially represents um, how divided we are as a country. Let me ask you this, B. <clears throat> if he were to win president, right? Mm -hmm. Let's say he won, mm -hmm. uh, no matter if he's in the poll, leading in the polls or whatever. Let's just say he won. Yeah. What happens in America? Is it pure? The founding is, is fathers, there a civil war? No, but the founding fathers created a system of government where there are enough checks and balances where, believe it or not, the president doesn't make as much a difference as people think. However, the president sets the agenda. Mm -hmm. And remember that when the powers that be, when your cabinet comes to you and there's a crisis, uh, everybody from the State Department to the CIA to defense intelligence to uh, your chief of staff, everybody has a different idea. Everybody has their own point of view. Everybody comes to the president and they say, here is our plan. Mm -hmm. The president then has to sit with his chief of staff or whoever and decide which plan of action makes the most sense. The one thing that I will give to Trump, and you don't, you know I don't like him because he's very, very arrogant, but, and I don't like anybody who's arrogant like that, but my feeling is that Trump, if there's a silver lining, I, I don't think, I, I've said again, I don't think he has the votes. The numbers just don't add up. He's not going to win the presidency, Hillary Clinton is. But if he were to, I think you're going to see a, a more sober version of, of a guy whose ego is big enough so that he'll want to create some kind of a positive legacy. He's going to want to try to solve problems. I don't think he's a dumb guy. I don't think he's dumb. Um, I do think he's a narcissist, but I don't think he's dumb. And my hope would be that he would surround himself with smart people. He's not an ideologue. He's not really right or left. I think Trump, if there's anything good to be said about him, is he's a guy who, who would approach everything as a problem to be solved. Ted Cruz is an ideologue. Ted Cruz is um, so far to the right, and Bernie Sanders is so far to the left, that their ideology makes them, in my opinion, more inflexible uh, than someone I'd like to see who is more centrist like myself. So... My answer then is that if Trump were to become president, I don't, I don't know, I don't know, but I don't think uh, it would have as grave an effect on the country as someone like Ted Cruz to the right or someone as far to the left as Bernie Sanders. I think both those guys are not good choices. Uh, I think Bernie Sanders is a, I mean, he, he, I don't think he's even a socialist. I think in his heart he's a communist. I think he really does believe that. Um, the people that produce in this country, the people that make the most money should be taxed at least 75% of their income, which means that if you make more than $250,000 a year, you'd have to essentially, 75% uh, of your day would be to work for someone else. That, that is how he believes. He's, he believes that the way you create an equal playing field is by taxing those that make a lot of money, and I think there's a better way to do it. It's just a difference in opinion, philosophy. Just got to figure it out, man. Here's my... Uh, Thanks for dropping... Oh, that wasn't your dropping knowledge. No, I'll give you a drop of knowledge. I think that's interesting. Um, by the way, uh, uh, by the way, here, here's a here's a call to uh, action. I have been very critical of Kanye West. Ooh, ooh, yeah. Ooh, I think my brother got me Yeezys for my birthday. By the way, yeah. <laughs> In so your excited. face, Kay. Birthday's this Wednesday, ooh. by the way. Or right, no, uh, I got to get some Yeezys. What size are you? What When's size shoe are you, bro? Well, I might. What size shoe? Thirteen. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, I I have to say that I've been um, I've been very critical of Kanye West as you know. Oh word. Right? And I've been I've been You I, hated him. I hated him because um, I made a big mistake in how I approached this issue. And that was that I listened to what other people were saying about him. I listened to sound bites, um, and I listened to people who didn't like him to begin with. Mm -hmm. I also had a judgment on him. He was a rapper, uh, he was black. No, 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 I don't mean judgment that way. I just meant I don't listen to rap as oh, much. No, 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 no. I'm being honest. I don't listen to rap as much. I, 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 um, I figured that there, there's a stereotype I have on black rappers. Mm -hmm. If they wear chains and they drive fancy cars, I have a, I have personal, a personal 
I, what I'll do is I'll draw a bunch of conclusions. It's not for you. I'll just draw, draw yeah. a bunch of conclusions when I see that. Yeah. The way I did with Lil, Lil Wayne. Yeah. Like I had a very strong point of view on Lil Wayne. I don't know his music. And then I listened to some of his interviews and I realized Lil Wayne is a way smarter guy than I am mm -hmm. and works harder than I do and knows a lot more about certain things than I do. Mm -hmm. So I came away with a great deal of respect for someone like Lil Wayne, even though I might not like his music. So what was the change So with Kanye? Kanye, I went and I said, Look, I started thinking, I said, well, Brennan likes him and people speak so much and he's had such an influence. He's good. And then I looked at the amount of work that dude has put out, the amount of, now listen, as an artist, as somebody who makes their living with their imagination, I looked at how much music that dude has put out. When you create that kind of volume, and then I bought every single song he's ever done. I bought every piece of music he's ever created. And I listened to everything, and I listened to it three times, mm -hmm. and then I got the lyrics, mm -hmm. and, uh, and 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 I listened to it, and I, and I went, look, some of the songs are all right, some of them are great, some of them whatever. You cannot deny that this guy is always changing up his sound. There, he's not comfortable. He's an artist. He's always changing up his sound. So I had, I had, I was like, okay, I gotta respect this effort. I gotta respect this effort. And then. I went and I started listening after after the Tim thing. I was home in my uh, uh, hotel alone, and I started to listen to this dude's interviews. I listened to the rant he did on Jimmy Kimmel. This is a new one. Who is that? This is the new Kanye. I just wanted you to know. <laughs> there you go. How long can we play it before you see? 15 seconds. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. Well, there you go. So I listened to this dude talk. Listen, man. I listened to this guy talk about his philosophy, about what he's trying to do, about his point of view on life, about the state of affairs in the world. And I got to tell you, man. I came down almost 100% on what he was saying. I was like, I get this guy. He was speaking my truth. He was speaking to my value system. Just a pure artist. This dude though. is a smart he, he guy. He says some outlandish he shit, which arrogant, I'm not on board with. He has with. arrogant outbursts. You have to be. When you he have said, to be that arrogant to be that special. Well, well, what he said was, no, you don't have to be that arrogant. You have to believe in yourself. You have to mm -hmm. have tremendous self-belief. And he said, my mother taught me to believe in myself. And to put no limitations on myself. And so when he says, I'm like Jesus, I'm like Shakespeare, I'm like Mozart, I'm like whoever. He's not saying he's like that. He's saying those are his heroes and that is Correct. who he aspires to be. Correct. When you try to aspire to be people that revolutionize the human condition, yeah, artistically, spiritually, and uh, you know, even scientifically, well, guess what? That's not such a bad thing because if you reach... If you reach that high, well, if you you're going to do some shit. It. If yeah. you even touch it, you're going to do some and special I, shit. And I loved what he said. And he said, if you meet an artist and you like them, there are two words that you should say to them. Thank you. Boom. And I just thought, and I listened to him, and I really listened to a lot of interviews. And I was wrong. And I came full circle on a guy who I had such a judgment with. I don't like, I still don't like arrogance. I don't like people who are loudmouths. Yeah. But you know what Kanye did? He, I found him difficult because he called me out on my own limitations on, mm -hmm. on the limitations I put on myself on the idea that I'm, I'm kind of a, I'm kind of a conservative. Yeah. In, in who the way who I think says you can't work. go to a Christian charity and drop some F bombs. That's right. Kanye would never have. Kanye never. would have said, Oh, here's what I have to say. And Whether you're you lucky like it or not. and you're lucky. Yes. You're welcome. Yes. You're welcome. Yes. And if some people don't like me, good. I did my job. Correct. So, so, Man, I, I have to say, so I was Con so impressed with him. And, I love and it. I've come full Brian's circle. Brian's a Kanye fan. I've come full circle. I love it, man. Um, listen, if you're like Kanye and you have a passion that you're obsessed with, that it, it keeps you up at night, you live for it like Brian and I do with the Fire and the Kid, then you should show it off with an easy to use tool and templates. Squarespace. Square, how, how Squarespace, Brian. Off? You mean create a website? Yeah, man. Everyone know, thinks dude, it's hard. Dude, no, we it, create Brian the Kid I'm not, with it. I'm not good with technology. And I don't have, have $50,000. This is for you. Squarespace helps you showcase every detail of what drives you every day, whether it's a business, product, whatever you want. Squarespace. Yeah, do we use it? TFATK is created by Squarespace. That we brilliant TFAT, website. We used our TFAT website. TFATK is Squarespace. Wow. Because if it's worth the effort, it's worth showing to the world, just like your heroes, Kanye West. Steve Jobby Jobs, whoever it is, Squarespace can help you showcase it to the world by using this easy template, easy, 
If you don't have a website, Way, if you don't create have a website, website, you got nothing. If you ain't on the web, you ain't shit. Yep. That's what my mama said to me when I was four. She said, listen, if you ain't on the web, you ain't shit, Big Brown. Yeah, it I said, is. damn, mom. She said, that's right. Start your free trial today, you little bitch. Mm-hmm. Visit squarespace.com slash fighter. You should. Squarespace. Squarespace.com slash fighter. Because if you ain't squarespacing, you ain't shit. You ain't shit. Squarespace.com. Um, slash fighter. Uh, yeah, and and to just to round off my, uh, I'm sorry that we're gonna get into. You want to keep going? Questions. Okay. Just to round off my dropping okay. knowledge that it, it, about the Kanye. If you have a judgment on something, um, take a look at why you don't like it, and take a look at who told you not to like it, and confront that. You might learn something. That's all I have to say. Yeah, you might learn some. Get your head out your ass. I was being. I was being. You know what I was being. I was being a big racist. I was being a, not racist, okay. but I was being a bigot. I was being prejudiced. Yeah. No more N words to with somebody Callen. to somebody who who I N-word, had a judgment not, on. Not anymore. Hey, Kanye, Kanye said Kanye the fan. new N word is exclusivity. The new N word is status. Is that we are behind this velvet rope, and you don't? And Kanye said something really cool. He goes, "I think everybody else is crazy. Are you telling me that you're not willing to speak up? That is it about the Maybach? Is it about the the luxury goods? Do you hear what Kanye, Kanye said? He was at the airport, and the line." For regular seating yeah. in the airplane, no one was there. But in VIP, there, you know, for first class and VIP, the line was so <laughs> long. And he's like, this is what's wrong with the world. So he went and bought a commercial ticket. It's like, what the fuck's wrong with you guys? Because you're so worried about status and not being lower class or middle class yeah. or being average. You guys are just going to stay and yeah. sit in this line instead of the open over here. Look, Kanye is always, people like this are always asking questions of themselves and of the society around them. He says some crazy shake, shit. Yep. But they're trying to shake things up. And and I, I truly but believe he's heaven he's to a, my he's ears. A, he's, a, he's, a, he's a good human being. You should follow him on Twitter. It's crazy. I'm sure he says some crazy stuff. Yeah. yeah. And that, that will turn me off. Yeah, you don't Look, want that. it doesn't you don't, mean, you don't need to see all it that. It doesn't shit. mean Kanye's perfect, and it doesn't mean he doesn't have shortcomings to his personality. Kanye for president. Yeah, it doesn't mean he's not arrogant. It doesn't mean he doesn't have shortcomings. It doesn't mean he doesn't fall victim to the 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 lesser sides of his nature. So Callan's a fan of Kanye. Let's go to some fan questions. Fan questions with the cub. All right, let's do it. <laughs> hey First cub, one. hey yeah. cub, that beard's looking mighty fine. You using that Dapper Life beard oil? You're goddamn right, I am. Yeah, because I got Dapper Life in my hair, you bitch. God, so we got <laughs> Dapper great. Life. Your hair looks great on my face. We got Dapper Life all over this place. Dapper Life is good for your entire head. It really is. Your, your entire beard face. or your head. Yeah, it does everything. Rub Dapper it all Life. Over my chest. Dapperlife.com wow. promo code fighter get ten percent off for the best pomade you've ever had in your life. Or beard. If you oil. don't like it, beat it, nerd. Is it beard butter or beard oil? What do we call beard oil? We don't do beard butt. How's that? How's that beard beard oil? Does it, do you like it? Makes my face feel like I just just strolled out of a goddamn fl- garden of flowers. Oh, garden of flowers. <laughs> smell fantastic. Fantastic. My brother uses it too. He has a you saw Jay's beard. Yeah, I like his nice beard. beard. He's been Jay, using Jay's that. Jay's dropped some pounds too. Jay's dropped some pounds. You know why? Jay had horrible kidney stones where he could barely walk. Had to go to the emergency room, and they said it's because you have a terrible diet. He's drinking diet soda. He lives on monster en- energy, energy drinks, and, drinks and candy. Bars, yes, yeah. and they're like you got to stop it. Change his diet. This little dude lost like 18 pounds. He's looking good. Still has the hump on the back like a camel. That's good Other for, that's that, good for the desert. Good. If he crosses the desert, he's got water to drink. He's on. ripped up right now. It's the best I've ever seen him he look. Looks good, man. His arms are tight. Yeah. Jay Jay's a strong. Is a st- big strong guy. Oh yeah. Super strong. Jay Shaw Shab is a fucking soldier. Talking about if shark eyes, sh- dolphin smile. The shit hits the fan. You want the dolphin eyes. You, you want, want that. You want that you want dolphin, dolphin smile. smile. You want dolphin smile on your side. You got that dolphin smile. Rip your face off. I love him. Fat ass dick. Always bring him. Fat ass dick on that kid's kid. Piece, by the way. Huh? <laughs> it's weird, man. It's distractingly Always. weird. Yeah. Distractingly uh, big. Yep. Looks big like old, an elephant trunk. Big old water. fat doll dick. All right. All right, we ready? We ready for fan questions now? I'm not talking. Yeah, DepperLife.com promo code fight us. Get your pomade beard oil on, you bitch. All right, All right, what do you got? First one comes from Stefan714. I was just in the hospital with pancreatitis for three week for three days last week. What is the longest amount of time you have been in the hospital? Gallon. I had a hernia. I was there for. Did you have a, to have surgery? A day. Uh, one day. That's your longest one day. Yeah. Well, I uh, lacerated my liver in high school playing football in Florida. Did you? Lacerated my liver. My ribs broke and ran into my liver, which is why I missed my entire senior year of football. I didn't know that. Scholarship said, see ya. Anyways, uh, I was in the hospital for probably a week. A week. I I couldn't fly back. 
I had to stay there an extra week. So I was basically in Florida, Orlando for two weeks. My dad came and saw me. It's kind of cool because I had a last rate liver. I couldn't do much. So I was like in a wheelchair in SeaWorld. I was like grabbing the seals and all this shit. Yeah. What did you it was feel? like make a what wish, but I wasn't like? sick. But what did you feel like? Nothing. I mean, I was sore, but the last rate liver, like. You don't really feel it. Mm, I was like sore and like pain, like sharp pain. But you, your your ribs broke into your. Yeah. You're a tough. You're actually very tough. Oh, like, thanks, man. Like he wanted to get on the horse. Like I've I've ridden horses, so I I had to ride this horse for this thing we were shooting, and he wanted to get on it with it. And I said I don't want to put two people on the horse. The horse could buck us off, and he goes, "So what? We'll get bucked off and fall. We'll be fine." And I was like, I don't think that way. You're not really afraid to fall on no. your back. You're not afraid to fall off a horse. No. You don't really care about no. shit like that. But then I realized you did two of the roughest sports on the planet for so long that falling down off a horse is no big deal. Well, it's like you. our director. Cause there's, this, there's a scene where I step on a guy and pull a knife out of his back. Well, I didn't know you're supposed to act like you step on him. I just stepped on his back and the guy goes, ah! Dead serious I'm like Oh my god Relax man Mitch is like Brandon can I talk to you For a second Listen You gotta take it easy On the actors Cause you do that You can hurt I'm like what the fuck man yeah. Bunch of bitches Well you're just you're, you're, When I saw you run I was over a kid the hill, in dirt Brandon had to run At me Like at camera Like he was ki coming To kill me And I won't give out Any more than that And he had a, a, a weapon in his hand y You <laughs> The girls who are Watching you run They'd never seen a pro athlete actually run top speed. And they go, I was running. They go, he's so fast. He's so scary. <laughs> Got some speed on you, kid. Got some speed. Uh, so, yeah, probably a week when I last laid my liver. That was a bad one. Yeah. I fucking hate hospitals. Hate them. Ah. Nothing worse. Next question. They're not fun. Next co question come from Steelo Wars. Brendan, did you always like art as a kid, or did you see it as a good way to make money? No, when I was a kid, I used to create my own comic characters. I used to draw nonstop. My dad bought me a, a one of those art easels. I used to sit in my room, draw. Literally, it was all I did. Sports and draw. Sports really? draw. All I did. Wow. I had my own. I created my own characters. I uh, my mom. I'll, I'll, I'll blast a picture of it when I go to Denver. I drew in art class, my favorite class. I drew this huge Marilyn Monroe picture. Huge, wow. and it's there's three Marilyn Monroe faces, and I painted it. It's and it's, when you walk to my mom's house, she framed it. It's like her favorite thing. That's awesome. I even signed it at the bottom like fucking Vince Van Gogh. And so that's cool. Shit. Yeah, nice. I've always been to art, man. Always, I love to draw. That's where the shirt stuff comes from. Hmm. There you have it. Boom. Cool. Next question comes from Kyle Coleman, seventy-two. UFC two hundred. Give me your top five fights that you can make for it. I'd love to see GSP come back. Not really, but be a lot of hype. I hope he stays retired. Um, I'd like to see Misha Holly too. Um, yeah. Who else? Connor Aldo. Oh, yeah, I'd like to see Connor on that card. I'd love to see Aldo uh, get another shot. What about Connor Frankie? It scares me. Yeah. It I scares want to see me. Connor win. Yeah. What about, uh, what, what, I, I'd, you know, I'd like to see Nate Diaz, Robbie Lawler. I'd also like to see Wonderboy Thompson, Robbie Lawler. Well, no, Wonderboy's well, already tied up. Yeah, he's placed tied up. Um, uh, I'd like to see Hector Lombard. Lombard. How about Hector Lombard, GSP? Is GSP? How about how about GSP, Robbie Lawler? Yeah. Are there rumblings of GSP coming back? Mm -hmm. hmm. Yeah, George was at. Uh, he was at 196 in Vegas. The rumor was he's if suited up is if Connor won, he was going to jump in the ring, but that's the rumor. Hmm. Wow. I don't, yeah, Connor was GSP. Was, yeah. I mean, people's dicks might fall off. That yeah, might okay. happen. No kidding. I get this. I get the boob die. I'd like to see Robbie Lawler, Nate Diaz, Connor, Misha, Holly. Um, blah, 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 blah. Let's see a return of Brock Lesnar, Shane Carwin. Oh, you want to do Lesnar Carwin too? Yeah. Fuck yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to blow this thing up. Yeah, you just you got me all real excited about it. There you here. go, dog. Hell yeah. Uh, go ahead and toss CM Punk in there against oh Mickey. Mickey no no name? Mickey Gall. Mickey Gall. Watch your P's and Q's. Nah, Mickey Gall. Kid's a beast. I don't think he's ready to fight a real fighter, man. Give, like, Mickey Gall? Or Mickey Gall. He just fought in the UFC and knocked I'm, the guy I'm, That's out. what I'm saying. Don't, don't put CM Punk. You're against, saying CM Punk's not ready. Yeah, he's not ready for Mickey Gall. I know. Gall. I want to watch that. <laughs> Uh, no. hey, hey, bro, it's my dream 200, not yours. Hey, okay, all right, all right. 
Maybe Big Brown makes an appearance. There you go. And you fight somebody at 145 for the fuck of it. I just kick him right in the face. Kadoosh. Boom. Peace. I'm out. Find the kids. Subscribe now. iTunes. Get your shirts at the front. There you go. That's all. What else you got, Ev? All right. Last question. This is a good one. This is a good, serious, long question. So listen up, Brian and Brendan. Okay. All right. As fathers and entrepreneurs who travel, do you ever feel guilty by not being around as much as you'd like to with your family? As a school teacher and martial time. arts teacher, there are many nights where I don't get to see my children. And as a child who grew up with an absentee father, I often have anxiety about this, disappointing I, my wife and kids. How do you deal with your time away from your kids? And have you ever felt this way before? And if so, how do you cope? I have that anxiety. Well, I all it. I have that anxiety all the time. It's my biggest problem. It's it's the leading cause of tension between my wife and I. She's right about this. Uh, I need to spend more time with my kids. When I was watching the Ronaldo thing with his son. I noticed how much time he spent with his kid. If Ronaldo can spend that much time with his kid, I can spend that much time with my kid. What I do is I try to make time with my kids count. I'm not good at it, but I try to just focus on them, not be on my phone, not do all the things I do. And that's not easy, but I do my best to. Um, Like I'll go hiking with them. I go to a place instead of my house. If I go somewhere with them, it's always an adventure and it's fun. So take them out. They'll remember the time you spent with them if you take them hiking, if you take them hunting or fishing or whatever it might be. That's the way to do it. That's my opinion. Uh, yeah. I mean, with, with this stuff, it's, it's, I don't know how to do this so I sound like a dick. Listen, it's what, it's what you signed up for. Is Brian a bad dad? No, he's a special dad. Uh, it, I've been home maybe six, seven days since my child's been born i'm working man someone has to provide when you sign up to date an entertainer an athlete there's not a normal nine to five schedule that being said when i am there it's fucking it counts man it's quality you know, you know i'm a yeah. balls deep in my son's life mm-hmm. you know this morning i was with him all morning before this when i'm home i'm present i'm there that's mm-hmm. what's big you turn your phone off i turn my phone I, yeah that's why when you t- sometimes when you text me i don't get back to you the next day mm-hmm. so uh i take pride in being a good dad you know what i'm saying and as the kid gets older it's more important right now he's so young the mom's everything when i leave town i fly people in i make sure her mom takes work off i pay you know i make sure there's all these that kid is fucking set man there's no, I make, he's number one in my life. Mm-hmm. That kid's set. And as I get older, he's going to get it. Someone has to provide. Dad doesn't work a nine to five. Sometimes dad has to go on the road so he can live right across the mm-hmm. street from the beach. Sometimes dad has to go on the road so I can afford Yeezys for your little ass. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So uh, it's what you sign. You don't sign up. You don't start dating Brian Callen or Brendan Schaub without knowing what you're signing up for. Does that make sense? Yeah. If, if you're looking for a guy in a suit, nine to five, we know vacations. We know when you can go on vacations and we know that you can attend this and this. I'm not the guy. And for some the job. women, some women need that. And you know, some women, it, it's hard for some women to date. It takes a special kind of woman to date. hundred uh, percent. An entertainer 100%. or an athlete. It's uh, what you sign up for yeah. though. It's, yeah. it's what you, it's like buying a fry. I'm like, what the fuck, man? This thing's fast as fuck. Yeah. Well, yeah, I can't drive it in traffic. Yeah. When you took it around the park, the thing was fast, right? Yeah. Well, now that you bought it, it's and you have it for all these years. It's still fast as fuck. Yeah, that's what you signed up. You for. You wouldn't want to be around me if I didn't have my outlets. If I didn't huh? have, if I wasn't able. To Real quick, if I can't do my schedule, work out, do the live shows, do this, do Fighting Kid 3D. If you try and limit me, everyone's unhappy. Yes, we're all fucked. Yes, and then your ass has to get a job. Then I'm a stay-at-home dad. Then the kids gonna be weird. Mm-hmm. Gonna be around me all the time. Mm-hmm. Gonna be playing video games. Mm-hmm. Cheeto fingers. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. You're so right. no, there's the it, people they put you in this bubble where you have to have this nine to five to be a great dad. That's just wrong. In our world, it's different. Mm-hmm. I know you know Rogan's one of the best dads I've ever met. The way he spends time with his kids and he's busier than me. So um, it's about quality time. Yeah. Are we done? I think yep. we're done, Brian. That's a wrap. All right, guys. I'll be at the San Jose Improv, April one, April two, April three. Boom, see go see Brian Callen, San Jose. And this week, you filthy animals, Irvine Improv, this Wednesday. Get tickets right now if you're listening to it. I think there's something only like 23 tickets left. Check our website right now, tfatk.com. Irvine Improv, Wednesday. I think it's 8 p.m. Get there. Final Kids coming at you live, OC, you filthy bitches. And then Denver, March 18th, my birthday, March 19th. That's a Friday and Saturday. At Comedy Works in the Landmark, Comedy Works South, 
Fine Care coming at you. Two shows on Friday, two shows on Saturday. First time we've ever done this sh- many shows because it is my hometown. Let's sell these bitches out. March 18th, March 19th, tfatk.com. Get tickets right now while you're listening to this. They're almost sold out. We're coming to Denver, kids. See you in Irvine. Hold See on. you in Denver. And and one, one a couple other things just really quickly. People ask me the books to read. Read Adam Grant's The Originals. Read uh, my buddy, uh, uh, Tailpiece, Big Brain, whose book, The Straight A Conspiracy, is now on audio. And I just want to give him a shout out because you can listen to it. If, you, if you're if you in school, you want to learn how to learn it's The Straight A Conspiracy by Hunter Motz and Katie O'Brien. So go to that. That's on Audible. I had to do that for him. Uh, and that's it. Everybody. Yeah, but instead of reading, uh, for sure go to the Irvine Improv, Denver Comedy Works, March 18th, March 19th, March 16th this Wednesday, kids. TFATK.com. This is the Fine Kid. We're out. Yeah.